Hello and welcome to Too Fast, Too Forever. With all kinds of family, we chose this one. This is episode 167, Game of Death from 1978. I'm Joey Lewandowski. I'm Joe Too. And this episode is brought to you by the Bruce Lee official family store. Shop.brucelee.com, which literally has the coolest fucking t-shirts I've ever seen in my life. They are so excited to share with you the beginning of their collaborations with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar to celebrate the 80th anniversary of Bruce Lee. Shout out to the Bruce Lee shop. And I, I, I'm going to wind up buying a lot of these t-shirts. As well. well, I just went there right now and I signed up for 15% off by giving them my email address and phone number. So did you cool. see these Kareem Abdul-Jabbar collaboration shirts? Go check them out. I'm looking right now. This is, I mean, I don't want to look right now because I feel like if I look right now, I'm going to get distracted this entire episode. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> the Bruce Kareem V1 champion t-shirt, I tweeted a picture of today. Yep. Their wingspans. It's yeah, this is super cool. Oh, and man, you can actually is... buy the tracksuit on there too, by the way. Oh, I'm yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, the yeah, full yeah. tracksuit. So this is probably the coolest website we've ever Well been shout out to shop.brucelee.com. Oh, there's also beautiful Converse low, low tops. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This and it's is... like champion shit that they're like it's like a collaboration with Kareem Champion oh. and uh, I know, I know. Oh. I'm done. Boy. Oh boy. Well, <laughs> welcome to Too Fast, Too Forever. After the break, we will be talking about Game of Death 1978, plus some other stuff, which we will talk about then. But Joe, extracurricular activities, what have you been up to? In the last week, I watched the newest WandaVision, so we're like caught up. And cool. you were right, exactly what you said happened. I just totally forgot that there was a surprise at the end of the one episode. Mm hmm. But, but I remembered it after Rachel was like, Yeah, you dumbass. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. Did that, watched some hockey. Temptation Island is up, so like we watched that last night, and it was fucking incredible. These There was three different cries last night. Oh, okay. So th for, for, for a second, I forgot that you mentioned Temptation Island. Then I, I, I equated that to hockey. And I was like, hockey has gotten weird. <laughs> if there's three cries in one hockey game. But okay, but Temptation Island makes more sense. No, um, although one of the Penguins did like get really fucked up last night. He got like really hurt, like to the point where like the one reporter that was there was like you could hear him screaming from the ice. Like, oh yeah, that's always fun. Yeah, it was it was not good. Like poor Jason Zucker is gonna be out for a while. So I do want to once again shout out the Pittsburgh Penguins for somehow not scheduling any games. Only two games all season long on Wednesdays. Yep. So our schedule and you know like the the weeks that we've picked out uh bonus episodes like there will be a bonus Patreon episode released this week. Also, you know when we record that it's also a, a, a day off. So like it's <laughs> It, they've really scheduled with this podcast in mind, so shout out to the Pittsburgh Penguins. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Temptation Island, yeah, there was three different cries last night, and we got to, like, the first bonfire, and the bonfire is always, like, when they show you video clips of your significant other being a shithead cool. in the other house. This one poor girl, she walks in last night, and she's like, look, I you know what i feel great and he's like you look radiant like the host is like is mark Wahlberg not that mark Wahlberg? a different mark Wahlberg?" and he's like you look like you know you're really good and she's like yeah man for like the first time in a long time i looked in the mirror this morning and i was like i'm very happy with myself and he's like that's good man like you know that's you're making progress that's yeah. good then she saw like the video of her boyfriend and she oh, was no. just like a broken person she's like yeah. i don't know what's happening it was just chaos and we were like <sighs> we need to fix this poor girl the other girls that were sitting there like because he said like something really shitty like like she's like useless or something. i don't know whatever but the other girls that were sitting there i was like yeah we need to ban the ban you guys together and you need to like like prop this girl up this week you know what i mean like she's gonna get the like you deserve better you don't need to let a man put you down like that sure and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I'm, I'm excited for it she deserves it because this girl's fucking broken so that really sucks but temptation island's doing good and that's pretty much all i've been up to so the the big news is i told you when i got my, my plans for this year, my goals to get vaccinated, there are two things that I wanted to do what? in the early half of the year. Number one oh, yeah. is watch F9 in theaters. I don't know. We, we have maybe some news about that. Not really, but we have some sort of updates, kind of, sort of, a little bit. Kind of, sort of, yeah. In the On the Street segment. The other one, fantasy baseball draft in person. I will. I am pleased to announce that just under four weeks, three and a half weeks from today, we have a fantasy baseball draft schedule that will be both live and remote. And we're going to have, I think, 
five, at least five people in person, all fully vaccinated by that point, which I'm very, very excited about. It's very cool, dude. That's awesome. Yeah. So uh, it's going to be a, a weird draft because we implemented unlimited keepers last year. So there's going to be fewer people to draft than ever before, but... Unlimited keepers. That's kind of weird. Do you have like a roster cap? Like you'd obviously... So we have 25. Gonna... So okay. I'm right now maybe keeping 19. And it's a mixture of like high profile expensive guys and a bunch of guys for like a dollar. Um, just because like I'm not really high on them, but they're a dollar and that's the cheapest they can be. So I can't get somebody cheaper. And if I'm, if I think that they're better than like what's likely to be out there, why not? Do you guys not play the waiver wire then? We do. Is no, it... no, no, we do that. This is just the draft. So this is just, you know, as soon as the draft is over, it, there's no difference. It's just like, if you add a guy who was not drafted, you can keep him for $1. Or like if I draft a guy for $10 in our auction style draft and I drop that guy and then you pick him up, you can keep him for $10. So it's just like the okay. guy keeps the value of whatever you, whatever he was auctioned at. But March 20th, I'm very, very excited. You and I have uh, some very special baseball-related things going on the night before, which oh. we will share news about down the line. And but, if you're a patron, uh, I'm sure you can guess because it was yes. in the chaos episode <laughs> 50 times. <laughs> But yeah, that'll be the night before on the 19th. And then on the 20th, we are heading down to uh, the Jersey Shore, down where my friend lives down there in his basement. He hosted the draft a couple of years, and then it came here for a couple of years. But we're going back there for one last hurrah there. So I'm very, very excited about that. Trying to think what else I've been up to. I've been playing the Spider-Man game on PS5. I was talking to Wes about that because I think he's written in. I think he's talked to us about that. It's yeah, a lot he's of really fun. hype on it. Yeah. It's very easy, which I'm not like disappointed in, but I'm just like, oh, this seems okay. Like it just, you know, and not even like different. It's just like the puzzles are very easy. It's like find a junction box and like you click in the right thumbstick to like use Spidey Sense and you're just like, oh, there's the gold thing. Okay, I'm just going to go over the gold thing. It's just, it's a very weird, like very accessible game, but it's a lot of fun. I'm playing that. Seinfeld got to the first episode that I knew by name, which I know that you know that I saw because you liked the tweets, but I got to the Chinese restaurant episode. Yes. Which did I enjoyed. Did you like it? I did, I did. Uh, okay. It's getting better. The show is getting better. I think I finished... I'm pretty sure I've finished now season two, or maybe I have one episode left. I just okay. finished today Simpson season two and Eastbound and Down season two, different thing altogether. Yeah. And then either Seinfeld season two is over now or it's over tomorrow, but they're all rounding into shape. I'm really enjoying all three of those. Do you like Eastbound and Down? I do. So I don't like the dis the self-destructive comedy. Like, I don't think it's funny when people are just an asshole to be an asshole, but I get that it's like the series long journey to him not be an asshole. But like the season or in Mexico, stoked. my favorite episode I think so far was in season two where Adam Scott as like the asshole kind of agent who like screws Kenny over makes amends in AA. Like that was super funny. And then Kenny making his rounds in Mexico before he goes back to America. Like that's just a really funny and like McConaughey's in that episode. And so there's a lot of really good cameos and a lot of fun to be had in that yeah so i'm enjoying it i'm enjoying it a lot two more seasons it's a it's a short show right so i'll it's be very I'll be done with it basically like each episode we record i'm basically will have finished another season of the show so it's easy to watch too like eastbound and down oh for sure yeah there's there's great cameos i like even if you don't like the self-deprecating humor there's jokes in every episode that i'm sure that get you like just like one-liners that'll just like oh yeah, drop. yeah. That are just like, oh, fuck, that's, like, really funny. And I know this isn't going to be for everybody, but, like, even in, like, the, the, the mean-spirited thing that I'm not especially a fan of, like, there's just, like, some, like, unequivocally great lines just, uh, that I won't repeat here. Because, yes. like, the show is just, like, strewn with, like, casual racism. Like, in a way that, oh, like, yeah. they don't champion, but it's also, like, they probably, like, it's only a decade old. Like, it probably couldn't be made like that today. Nope. There's just things that, like, are just written or delivered in a way that are just so goddamn funny it's like oh yeah like that that was great like i don't normally i wouldn't laugh at that but that was so perfectly whatever yeah there's a really great joke in mexico that like is probably like i think one of the funniest things i've ever heard on television that that's is... racism man i love to racism bro is it that because <laughs> no. that was maybe my favorite line from season two with michael pena as the billionaire drug lord uh baseball team owner uh where kenny power shows up his house and just like, saying some like really racist shit about mexicans and he just says that's racism man i love to racism bro just trying to <laughs> ingratiate himself with so that's that's a great one. But do you what, what was the, I mean? I can either bleep that out or just cut it out if it's if you don't want to say it on air. I don't know if it happened yet or not. Would it? it where's Steve? Well, I'm done yet? with Mexico. He's he's out of Mexico now, so he's back. But uh, 
But I don't know. Did, did he meet Stevie there? Stevie was down there, yeah. Stevie ma- met and married Maria, and Maria is now back in okay. uh, America. I, I, it might be in a later season. I, okay. I, gotta, oh, I don't want to oh, ruin it for you. Yeah. If it, okay. The only other thing I wanted to point out, uh, unrelated to TV, is that on Sunday I watched four movies, and they were all great. What I watched they? a Mike Manzi favorite that he had been telling me about for years, Night of the Comet, which is from 1984. Okay. Uh, so I've been doing this thing, old movie, new movie. So this is an old movie, obviously. Essentially, two valley girls survived the apocalypse. Oh. And there's this comet that, like, effectively, like, the, the movie kind of alludes to that it wiped out the dinosaurs and it comes back and it wipes out all of Earth and kind of makes some people zombies. But if you're, like, inside steel, like, some people stayed in the, just coincidentally, in, like, a movie projector studio or, like, a, like a movie projector box or, like, in a shed or whatever, like, it didn't affect you. And so it's just these two kind of, like, stereotypically dumb valley girls who survived the apocalypse and it's delightful. I really enjoyed cool. that. I watched the new Kristen Wiig movie, Barb and Star Go to Vista Del Mar, which I'm sure you've seen around. I don't know if you've seen that yet or not. I saw a promo for it on, like, some some show that I was watching. It was probably, like, um, morning news one morning before I was going to work, and I saw them running. They were doing their tour of promo, right? Like, yep. how was it? It looked kind of It's funny. really funny. It's one of those premium on demand, so it's, like, $20. So I don't know if it's worth 20 but I would say when it comes down to, like, 6 or 7 or when it hits, like, Netflix or Prime or whatever, like, watch I thought like, just on Prime for, for free. Mm-mm. No, it's, okay. it's, a, it's a premium one. Because I keep one. seeing Prime ads for it, but I didn't realize that you had to pay for it. So that's good. Thank you for the heads up, then. It's really, really funny. They're both great, Kristen Wiig and Annie Mumolo, and then the supporting actors in Jamie Jamie Dornan, who is the uh, Fifty Shades of Grey guy, and then Damon Wayans Jr. are both really, really funny because they're just kind of like one-note characters because they don't have to be like well-rounded, but they're both hilarious. Then I watched a movie called The Parallax View, which is like a political thriller from the 70s, which is also great. Okay. Uh, it's by the guy who made All the President's Men about Watergate. This is ah. a movie he made a year or two before that, so that was great. And then I watched, which I'm sure you've heard about, you will probably see before the Oscars, I think in April or whatever, uh, Nomadland, which is the, like, widely considered one of the best movies of the year, just hit Hulu, ah. which is directed by Chloe Zhao, who did The Rider which is super depressing. This movie is pretty depressing, too. Uh, her next movie is a Marvel movie, which feels really weird. Uh, but this stars Frances McDormand of Fargo. Uh, oh, but yeah. she is almost certainly Chloe Zhao going to win Best Director for this, like, already. Like, I think I've talked about it here before in past years that, like, Walt and his boyfriend, Michael, who have both been on the show, uh, they do the uh, All the Awards shows. supplement. Yes, yes. yes. I, I've, I've read this before. It's really good if you guys... He has, like, a whole bunch of data that... Yep. It's like if you win these awards and these shows, yes. this is the yes. likelihood of you winning this So thing. this is the crazy thing. So of the 18 award shows, that like at, when, when Walt sent this newsletter over the weekend or whatever, of the 18 shows that had given out awards that he tracks, 17 of them, 17 of 18, gave Best Director to Chloe Zhao. And the only one that didn't gave it to Steve McQueen for his Small Axe series of movies, which are basically movies, like they're standalone things, but like Amazon considered a TV. So that's in- ineligible for Oscars. So like ah. Chloe Zhao is like, what was like, I-, I don't have anything to compare this to. Like this is so overwhelmingly like, we've never seen this before. Like where it's just like, it's gonna nobody be else has any points. So like, it's just hands down. It's probably also gonna be nominated for, nominated for Best Picture, Best Actress probably. I don't know if it's gonna win, but uh, depressing, but great, beautiful. Um, a lot of hype going into it, and I just uh, really, really enjoyed it. So it's on Hulu for free. So if you have Hulu, Nomad Land, which is great. Yeah, cool. And then I watched The Little Things, which is the HBO Max movie. By the time this comes out, I think it will be gone. That's the uh, Denzel, Rami Malek, Jared Leto movie. That was the one we were talking about with Garrett or, or with Heather. Maybe, possibly. We were talking uh, it's, about it. it's bad and dumb. Don't don't. don't it watch it. It was a thriller. It w- it was the one I think we, we were talking about it maybe after the episode with, he- with Heather. Oh, maybe yes, yes, remember? yes. Remember? And she was mm-hmm. like, and I'm like, oh yeah, that sounds great. It's Denzel, Rami Malek. Like it's a thriller. Yeah. And she was like, it's not that great. And I was like, come on, don't do this to me. So you're saying it too? I believe it was. So it was written, I think, in the 90s. It takes place in the 90s, and then it was just made today. Like there's, it's enjoyable in a way that is like, oh, they don't make movies like this anymore. Like it feels like kind of, you know, like uh in the wake of like movies like seven and the game and stuff like that like everyone was like hey let's just make movies like this that are like okay mid-level budgets and it's just you get a good actor or two and you just make a procedural and like that's this movie and so like it's not good i mean it's watchable but it's all it's over two hours long and i'm just like so there's a couple days left so if, if you're listening to this on patreon uh, and you have not seen it yet you'll be able to watch it this weekend i think it comes down on sunday before it you know comes back eventually but it's like one of those like it's on HBO Max for a month before it comes down because it's like a new release or whatever, but like yeah. there's better stuff to watch. 
I wanted to see it because I want to see what it was like. Heard bad things from two from two people that I trust their taste in. So you know, not a not the end of the world, but just no. saying that. We speaking of the Patreon, we have a Patreon page, Too Fast Too Forever .com. If you want to support the show, if you like the show and you want to support it, Too Fast Too Forever .com. Shout out to Cassie Wilson, Jake Freer, Ben Milliman, Nick Burris, Alex Ellen, and Justin Kleiman, Brian Rodriguez of Ooh. High School Slumber Party, Haley Gerbys, Wes Hampton, Christian Larson, Jerry Robinson, Dan the Duke Hayden. Renato DiDonato and Jessica Collins, a.k.a. Montez. Thank you all so very much for supporting us at the $5 level or above. Speaking of Montez, that was funny. I sent Joey a tweet that, like, Vanessa Hudgens is dating a guy that plays for the Pirates. Oh, I didn't. I forgot that element of it. I, like, I... Oh, I, you didn't? But yes, now I understand why. Yes, yes, yes. And the Pirates tweeted out, like, the high school musical... Is, is is that a T? Is it a T for Troy? Um, necklace thing. And it was Cole Tucker being like, no, it's a T for Tucker. Uh, yeah, I didn't remember that either. But like once I saw it, it, like my brain started to connect it. Yeah. So now I get that. Yes. The T is in Tucker. Yeah. Because I was like. I was thinking of Montez. This seems weird. But yes, uh, Montez for sure. Yeah. But yes. So shout out to all of you for the $5 level or above. Like we said, there will be a bonus episode. I don't know. This weekend, this episode will probably be up on Friday for patrons. And then the next one will be up Saturday or Sunday, maybe yeah, Sunday or Monday. Friday, so. so. So, yeah. yeah. So check it out. And if you want swag and merchandise, t-shirts, stickers, more, early access to episodes, bonus episodes, all that sort of stuff, too fast, too forever, dot com. We have an email address, family at cageclub.me. And we've got a couple emails today. So number one, so I, I've brought up on the show before how uh, generally terrible our YouTube comments are on yes. youtube.com slash too fast, too forever. They never talked about the movie. It's mostly the olds. <laughs> um, who are confused by a thing that says podcast in the title. They're like, this isn't the Hollywood Nights. This isn't, this isn't the movie. What are you, it's clickbait. It's like, no, thanks for listening, man. But like, it says podcast in the title. Like, we're not, whatever. But, but, but for the, for the first time ever in like the year and a half that we've had the YouTube up, uh, we got a productive, actual, useful comment. So 19 double nickel 55. Okay. So I'm guessing somebody who's maybe born in 55. I don't know. Comments on the Hollywood Nights video and says, in the speed shop, as the guys are admiring the custom job, Duke, Tony Danza, asks the mechanic if the color is piss yellow. Instead of using the character's name, the response is no, it's Tony Nancy yellow. Remember we talked about this because it's, yes. like, it's Tony Danza yellow or whatever. Yes. It says one of the actors is the real Tony Nancy, a well-respected muscle car customizing giant that shade of yellow was his signature color so i remember talking about this but i don't think we knew that little bit of information so no. thank you 19 double nickel 55 for the info like i was like oh that's a productive comment i'm kind of thrown by it i don't know how to respond every time youtube emails me like new comment on i'm like all right gotta gotta go do my like kill him with kindness thing and i'm like oh actually it's either it's it's one of two things it's spam or someone angry and then there's this one i was like oh my god yeah that was that's beautiful and and tony nancy yellow like that's a cool fact and yeah. it's something that we didn't know so yeah thank you for the heads very up. very cool. cool we got an email from jason Jason Dickinson, Cedric Line, hey fam, By the what's way, up? wait, before he even starts, this episode comes out on Jason's 30th birthday, so happy Well, he 30th. mentions that in here. He says, my podcast okay. is over 18 episodes, I've been on a Fast and Furious binge, and I can't wait for F9. P.S. Can you believe I'm going to be 30 on March 2, stay fast, stay furious, ride or die. Well, happy birthday, Jason. Have very and happy I birthday. cannot believe you're going to be 30, because I had no idea how old you were. Yeah. So I can both not believe it and totally believe it. So happy 30th birthday, Jason. Well, it's kind of funny, because I feel like everybody on the internet is my age. Right? So, like, sure. whenever I find somebody that's, like, not my age. But, like, that's right in our age range. So, it makes total sense. It's also cool that... He, so, that means he was born in 91. So, he was 10 when the first one came out. And he'll be 30 when 9 comes out, right? So, oh. he's it's it's right on the anniversary. That is. That's very cool. Super, super cool. And the last two emails, it's essentially one long email that I think... I don't know why, if there's a reason he split it up. But Justin Kleiman writes in, first one, subject line, been a while. Oh, what's up, Justin? And he's... Justin and I... We're talking because he asked for Rachel's homemade pasta recipe the Ooh. other day. Yeah, yeah. And he made it. He and Bonnie made it. And it looked really fucking good. So nailed it. That's awesome. Actually, so we'll talk about uh, Young Rock later. But when there's the um, there's the car full of uh, all the Karens and then the driver is Bonnie. I was like, if it was Bonnie, it could be a uh, oh. Justin. But it's just it's Bonnie. It's, it's, the, Bonnie, it's, the, pedest Bonnie. it's the pedestrian yeah. pronunciation, spelling, name. Yeah. Whatever, Karen, 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 Karen. Bonnie. <laughs> she's a she's a she's a um an honorary Karen because she has the car. Yeah. So Justin writes, 
finally getting around to getting an email into you. I'm sitting in a cabin in northern Minnesota at a state park. Came up to cross-country ski for the weekend. The day before we were going to leave, all our skis were stolen from our truck. Oh, Oof. lame. Vani hustled and tracked down ones to borrow and saved the trip. In other good news, we both got our first COVID shots this week. Congratulations to both of you. Welcome to the club. Yeah, welcome, welcome. Says, also, I've been watching all the Joe Parrot Talks with you episodes. It's so great. I don't want to spoil anything, so I'll just say I wasn't expecting what happens in the Rat Race episode. Big episode, yep. And the subsequent story arc. It hits real close to home for me. An amazing recommendation, though. Yeah. We love Joe Parrot Talks to me. That was such a great show. Did you watch season two or no? I think I just finished. I don't. They were weird episode numbers, right? Like, wasn't there only like a, like a few episodes? It wasn't like. No, there 12. were like 10 or 12 and then 13. Like, there's like 25 remember. in total. I only. I think I watched only season one then. Yeah, because season two, like, it sets up that he's growing a bean arch. Like, the whole, like, plot of season two is that he's growing a bean arch in his backyard. Like, this, you know, an arch that he builds that he, like, plants with bean stalks and it goes <laughs> okay. around. And like you're like this is going to be the emotional moment of the season and then there's more to it than that okay. and so then the rat race episode but yes agree agree justin glad you are loving the show and that's a very oh that's a big episode it says now on to liner notes or now now on to a lot of notes so bear with me although i do like the liner notes that's that's what chris podcast used to call his uh the notes for his now and again show the Ooh. liner notes i think i remember that too yeah simpsons slash seinfeld i've seen all the seinfeld episodes but I haven't watched it since the final episode aired. I'm not big on rewatching shows after they're done for whatever reason. Simpsons I lost interest in in circa 2005. So I guess halfway through probably. Yeah. I actually remember watching the pilot episode on the night it aired. The Christmas episode on the night it aired. I was 9 or 10. We watched it every week until the episode where the Ramones sing Happy Birthday. My mom walked in the room just as Joey Ramone said, Go to hell, you old bastard. And we weren't allowed to watch for a few more years. <laughs> I hate when that happens. That's an awesome story, though. They, that is very real. That's Wells' level of realness. That's two ice creams in the same day getting in trouble <laughs> levels of realness. I don't have a story like that. I just wasn't allowed to watch it. Although, um, the friends that I'm rewatching The X-Files with, one of them was talking about how, like, he used to watch The X-Files with his dad and his younger brother, and then one time their mom decided to join for an episode. And I forget which one it was, but it was, like, one of the more disgusting episodes in season three, and she's this like, you guys are not watching the show anymore. <laughs> like, she just drops in, like, you know, that show was always kind of, like, ahead of its time in terms of, like, not being racy but kind of being gross or whatever but like yeah. kind of extreme for like cable show or a network show at you know nine o'clock at night or whatever and there was one where it's like oh this is particularly gross and she's like yeah you can't you can't watch so he like a couple you know like six weeks later or whatever he got to watch it again but like yeah he's like this was the episode that like again same thing like this is the episode that like, I, I wasn't allowed to watch the x-files again because of this one so i have a very similar story now and i just remembered it and i remembered it when i was watching it i was watching south park at my uncle's house I forget what my uncle was doing something, but like I was with my aunt and I was like, oh, South Park's on. Cool. This is like a new one. You don't know South Park, but there's an episode where like Butters finds out that his dad is gay, is like going to like men's bathhouses. And it's like one of the like, like worst South Park episodes, like to watch with somebody that's an adult. And like that. Yeah, it was the same thing. It was just like, yeah, we shouldn't be watching this. And I was like, yeah, you got me. Cool. I'll, yeah. go, I'll watch it when I get home. Like, it wasn't my parents, right? So, like, I was just like, yeah, right. like, whatever. Like, they they don't care. So, like, well, we could turn this off. I get it. <laughs> like, well, I mean, I've, t I've told the story in here that, like, I, I rented the first Resident Evil game and played it in front of my mom and grandma made that mistake. And they're like, you're not playing this. I was like, all right, got to <laughs> yep. bring it back. So, we've all had that moment, I think. So <laughs> we've, We definitely all have. And I love hearing it. It's just, it's funny. It, and you'll always think of, like, that episode, that game. Like, the first thing you think of is be like, yeah, this was banned. <laughs> like... <laughs> I got in trouble for this one. He says, second one, new member Monica. I don't remember what I was going to respond to your email about, so I guess I'll just say welcome to the family. So oh. I love that this is another one of the Justin classics. Uh, made a note, don't remember. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. On brand, it works. Friday Night Lights. I've never seen the show, but the movie was amazing. The soundtrack is one of the best ever and totally got me hooked on Explosions in the Sky. Oh. The album that supplies the most songs for my movie for the movie is my all-time number one album. Very cool. I was just posted this on Facebook, you know, what movie songs are the like like movies and songs linked together. Like what are uh -huh. some of the best ones? You know, we were talking like Kiss, Kiss from a Rose, because actually that's what we were we were watching Batman Forever. Okay. Kiss from a Rose is that, but there's like there's so many soundtracks in movies 
that like are just so intertwined like that that just hit you when you're you know whatever age and you're just like yeah dude this was it i loved both of these things and what was the one recently there was like a tv show or a movie that used kiss by a rose oh i think it was no it wasn't pop star he was in pop star or he performed a song of pop star ah oh, shit maybe it was the vacation reboot but there was one where like they try to use it as like this big like romantic moment or whatever and then like things just go terribly horribly wrong and i don't remember the specifics of the specifics of the scene otherwise i would might remember what it is but like that that's been parodied with its own song okay. fairly recently i think but i don't remember what the first thing that comes to my mind and i don't know why it's this one just i mean tarantino is just so tied like but like stuck in the middle with you like steeler's wheel and just michael madsen dancing and reservoir dogs that's to that one. song before he cuts off the dude's ear like yeah joey and wrong numbers you talked about having a phone number that's very similar to a business i think you were right and getting called all the time when we moved to minneapolis we were given the phone number that used to be a herberger's department store at first we were polite but if a person called back a second time, we'd start messing with them. We'd pass the phone back and forth to whoever was at the house claiming to be different departments. Sometimes <laughs> we'd ask what they were looking for and try and talk them out of it. Pretty good. Pretty good. That's awesome. At work, not my, like, every bay of, like, research has, like, its own phone line. Mm -hmm. And, like, the one that's next to me where one of my buddies sits, it's somehow that's a number for, like, a physical therapist's office online somewhere as a number for a physical therapist's office. So, like, anytime his phone rings, I'm like, like, no, we're not a physical therapist's office. And he answers the phone. He's like, hello, you know, like, this <laughs> is the lab. And then he's like, no, this isn't the physical therapist. Like, like now he's just so right. depressed by it, right? Because it just happens all the time, so. Uh, there's no way to fix it, though, either. Like, you, no. you, you change your number. Like, it just, you know, uh, boy. Yeah, he gets a lot of olds that call and just are like, is this my physical? And he's like, no, it's not. And then he hangs up the phone. And he's like, wait. Wait for it, wait for it. It's like rings again. Yeah. Yeah, not, the, no, still not it. Says Nico and Kevo. I made it through the lap somehow without ever being able to figure out whose voice was whose. All I know is that one of them clips out the mic a lot. It must be harder to try, or must be murder, to try and balance the sound levels when you edit. That said, they were great guests. Well, I will also tell you that they recorded on the same audio track, so it was impossible to balance it. So, <laughs> yes. But love them both. I do. I do. School letters. I was listening to a podcast by a guy named Brian Rodriguez. It's called High School Slumber Party. He was talking <laughs> about lettering in high school. My only letter was in band. I don't think it, I accomplished anything, but I always showed up, and I guess that was all it took. Anyway, you should check out his podcast. It's pretty cool. It's called High School Slumber Party <laughs> by Brian Rodriguez. I think I've heard of that one before. But I don't listen to podcasts, so... <laughs> lastly for oh he said okay this is this one sheet of notes lastly for this sheet of notes mlb showdown wow i forgot all about this great card game Dude, I me and a friend it. played this a lot but now that i think about it i'm like 10 years older than you which makes it pretty nerdy that i was playing it in my 20s i guess that's what we moved into fantasy baseball because it's less nerdy now to check out that other sheet of notes well i actually just found so like every once in a while i remember a guy from back then and i like i google image search like mlb showdown rich aurelia who we talked about you know yeah. a couple weeks ago or whatever this week i don't remember what i search but i found like a modern player with an mlb showdown card and i found what, what is my new favorite website is somebody runs a blog spot which Send is me. called the greatest mlb showdown project so this is a guy or a team of guys i don't know why uh the the site loads very slowly uh, i guess just blog spot sucks but he created like all time teams, all decade teams, modern teams. It's so cool. He also did this whole like draft league where he drafted players into teams and like wrote a Python script to simulate seasons. And like, it's a level of nerdy that like I've been at, but I didn't publicize. Um, but I'm just like <laughs> lurking on this guy's blog spot. Cause like, it's all from like last year. Like, I don't know if this was like a quarantine project or what, but like, he's got a bunch of follower, like, a, like people who comment and stuff. And like, they're all like, this is awesome. It's so crazy. But like looking at like the best teams of all time or whatever, like I and think he it was made like, cards for them. That's what this he, is. Yeah, he like made like he created like the on base and the speed and the defense and the the hitting charts and like photoshopped like a player's like picture on there and like I want to say like the the best team of all time like in terms of point value was like that basically the cheating Astros from a couple of years ago, which makes sense. But like they have like three of the best pitchers of all time and a stacked baseball like a stacked hitting lineup, right? So I was just like, this is so like every day I just read another blog post. I'm like, this is so cool. This is really fucking cool. Yeah, it's greatest MLB Showdown dot blogspot dot com. So this is something you cool. definitely get lost in. God damn yeah. it! I wish somebody would 
have done this for first of all they needed to make an nhl version of this which makes even less sense like money wise like nobody would have bought that yeah we need to have like reboot the at least reboot the nfl showdown why don't they bring this back dude cards are coming back in a big fucking way by the way have you noticed this i know that pokemon cards are back because a lot of rappers who grew up with them now have money to like spend 130 grand on like a box of packs right so like that's coming back in a big way I've yes that. so so there's this thing and uh, there's this guy Gary Vaynerchuk. Do you know this yeah. guy? Oh, yeah, yeah, A year or two years ago, he was, like, posting these videos. Like, I see I, like I see them in my news feed, right? Somebody mm -hmm. was followed him. And one of them was like, yo, cards are coming back in a big fucking way. And I was like, no, they're not. And he's like, look, trading cards have been dead for a while. But, when and he explains it. When he explains it, it makes so much sense. We had cards when we were, like, what? Like, 8 to 12. And he's like, we're finally hitting that tipping point that happened also in the fucking 80s and 90s, where, like, the generation before you yep. starts having kids, and then mm -hmm. they introduce cards to their kids. And then the cards come back in because you're like, oh, this is something from my childhood, which is, like, exactly what happened for me. Like, my dad would buy me packs of cards, right? Because it was yep. like, he would be like, oh, here, get some NHL cards or, like, whatever. And you're like, oh, this is so fucking cool. And he only did it because he had them when he was a kid. And, like, that's how it works. So you're on this, like, 20-year cycle where it keeps going back. Anyways, bring back fucking Showdown, please, someone. Yes, please. So I never really got into the NFL one because, like, just my friends didn't care. After the fact, I think I showed you one time when you were here when we had a Camp Cage Club you here, have a maybe. Lot of them. Yeah. I have, like, they, because the cards, like, there were, so there are the foils, like, the rare ones, like the All-Stars or whatever. Yeah. But they didn't swipe right. Like, you had yes. to basically put a second card behind it. I like, remember whatever, this. However they made it. Mm -hmm. So they're like, hey, pay us shipping and handling, and we will send you, like, basically shitty photo, like, Xerox copies, but, like, actual card backing, but, like, looked terrible, like, grainy, black and white. Yeah. And we'll send you an entire set of all the foils, but, like, of not all foil. the rares. So I have that, but I kept everything because I'm a pack rat and I keep everything, but I have yeah. all those. But the one that was actually a blast, that, like, I only had one friend who ever cared about, but I, I don't remember at all how to play, but there was an NBA showdown, which was very cool, and there were, like, hot and cold markers, so, like, you could put, like, up to three on each, like, if a guy, like, had a good quarter, or maybe they're, like, strategy cards, I don't remember. But, like, the NBA one was, like, a blast as well. But, like, I mean, I think popularity wise and for me like nothing topped mlb like it was just mlb the was the was the hot shit that that was the one that like my friends really played that was the one because it was so close to like fantasy baseball and stuff right, right? like and, and I think that was the only so one that they did more than one year of. Yeah, that's right, because we talked about this. NFL only had one year, but yeah, baseball definitely had at least like two, maybe three. No, they had like four or five because uh. they did. They had two really good years. Like 2000 and 2001 are both really good. And then like for 20, 2002, let's say 2012, 2002, they like totally changed. Like they basically made it incompatible. Like they changed things a tiny bit from 2000, 2001, but like you could still use the cards together. And then they yeah. basically did it so that like, hey, you can't use old cards. Like there's a real like line in the sand here and they did like another one or two years after that so there was at least four what was better the original or the reboot i don't i mean i love the original and i think i don't know i mean i get why they had to like pivot or whatever so they could have more people buy more packs and everything but like i was like i think it was a combination of like just me getting like hitting an age where i was out of it kind of but also like this isn't as good as it used to be and so but yeah. i have the i have like the complete sets of the first two years i just don't have it for the third year because i was like i don't like this like this is not like yeah, they not completely cool. warped everything so yeah Justin's second email, the rest of my notes. Okay. And he starts, he's coming out of the gate hot here. Coming in hot, okay. God damn it, Jerry. Take a shit or get off the pot. <laughs> Ileana isn't going to wait around forever, so go grab a $100 gold band from the pawn shop and make this happen. <laughs> okay. Yeah, date doesn't matter. Justin knows, man. Just got to get it over with. Like, rip the bandaid off. But, like, you know, in terms of Band-Aid, it's like, you know, proposing to someone, right? So Put the Band-Aid on forever. Like, tattoo a Band-Aid on uh -huh. yourself, essentially. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> so Justin says the movie Angus, which is one that Brian covered on. I don't know if you know, Joe, I don't know if you heard this podcast. It's called High School Slumber Party. It's by this guy, Brian Rodriguez. He had a movie about Angus where... I don't actually don't know if you know the story about this, but he and Kate what? Hudson, who's been on the show, yeah. covered the movie Angus. Kate being Kate uh, was drinking, and Kate being Kate was full of fiery hot takes. Um, okay. By the way, your your Twilight episode is out now if you want to listen to that. People want to listen to that. Yeah. Um, which I cannot believe. I'm so disappointed in her and in Brian for never having seen, maybe not Brian, but I'm disappointed in her for not having seen the extended edition of yeah. Twilight. Because you're like, what? Hey, what about this scene? They're like, what are you talking about? You're like, why didn't you, like, Kate comes off as, like, the Twilight expert, which I think she is, but, like, yeah. never having seen the extended, like, 
come on, man, you got to bring it. Right? That's what I thought. Like, I, I, I did my homework, mm-hmm. and everybody else did a half-assed job on their mm-hmm. home. I felt like I was the only person dragging this group project along. Although I did love the uh, part of the episode where you effectively did the, like you did like the trailer watch along like we do on here but with the uh the hamster droppings rain stick scene or whatever like <laughs> and keeping like up. what yeah yeah Pretty yeah good. yeah there's a lot of crossover obviously between like segments or ideas mm-hmm. in these episodes it's all just also when Brian was like yeah pull it like find any tweet about the sh- uh, about the movies you're like are we going to be Wappy and Brian's like what you're like Boy, do we have pockets? He's like, oh, I guess we could. You're like, why not? So, yeah. <laughs> right? That's yeah. okay. Good. Yeah, that's, that's what I thought too. I was like, why would you not do this? Like, if it's a good idea, just yeah. use it. It doesn't matter. Also, like, whenever I see like somebody I follow like tweet about it, like Phoebe Bridgers, a musician I love, tweeted about like how it, <laughs> she's like, so Edward Colton's a hundred years old, and his favorite song is Claire to fucking Loon. Like, come on. Yeah. So I sent that to Brian, and I'm like, BD Wap for her, and so he quote tweeted it and did that. So uh, she did not respond, but um, still out there, know, man. Got yeah, a bunch exactly. of likes, yeah. Exactly. Um, so anyway, on his show, Kate was on. They talked about this movie, Angus, has starred this guy, Charlie Talbert, as Angus. And like Kate, full of her hot takes, they were not kind to Charlie's performance. And then somehow Charlie got wind of it and responded. What? And so then he he joined the show and like did like a, an Angus interview. And Brian and Kate together like just talked to Charlie about it and like basically apologized, apologized, apologized. And then Charlie has come on like at least one other time to talk about that movie Fear with Marky Mark, uh, which is the only way you're allowed to uh, refer to it. According to Kate, not fear. It's fear with Marky Mark. Okay. Uh, That's the full title. But like Charlie was a guest on that. So he's become like a friend of the show. (laughs) Because they the shit on his roller coaster. performance. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's awesome. Justin says, the movie Angus. I remember the soundtrack always being in used bins, which sent me down a rabbit hole trying to find the song American Girls off of it. I couldn't remember the band, only it was a super group made of Weezer, Cake, and Soul Coughing. That's actually a good band. Cake, Cake is good. Weezer, yeah. They call themselves Homie, and it wasn't on the Angus soundtrack, so it turns out this is all unrelated. Fun song, though. Check it out. It can only find it on YouTube. <laughs> nice. Interesting. Homie. American Girls. Cool. Homie American Girls. I'm putting a tab up. Go ahead. There was, there's a clip song, I think, called White Girl. So there's a movie that was called White Girl that came out like five years ago, which is good. It's not great, but like, it's just about this character played by Morgan Saylor, who she just like gets into all sorts of like terrible trouble and like gets out of it because she's a white girl. Like, just like, I'm going to get in, I'm going to get like trapped into like doing and dealing kind of drugs, but like, I'm a white girl. And so like, they're going to, you know, the system's going to take down the black guy. Like, it's a whole like, yeah, gets heavy. But anyway. The movie ends with a clip song, White Girl. And I'm like, this is a cool song. And like, it's not on Spotify. So like, if I want to listen, like if that song gets in my head, I'm like, got to go to YouTube. Like it's not Apple Music. It's not on Spotify. So like, what I'm saying is get your shit together, homie and clips and just get your stuff on wherever. <laughs> yes. Justin says, Goes Beer. It's one of my favorite German beers. Salt and Cardamon. Yes. There are only three breweries in Gosler, Germany, making it until about 10 years ago. The Gosler River has natural salt deposits that create the flavor. Ah. Uh... I have a friend who I used to brew with who's won a lot of home brewing awards and now owns a brewery here. I challenged him to come up with a recipe. He did it and it was amazing and he won a number of awards with it. Then, all of a sudden, the style blew up a year later and American breweries bastardized it into a sour beer. He turned his same recipe into one of the fests that he won a gold medal with the previous year. He didn't place and was told it wasn't sour enough. He tried to explain it wasn't a sour beer. But the judges weren't interested. Damn, I didn't know the history of Goes is like that. That sucks. I've drank a lot of German ones. I have drank German ones. And like all, like some of the famous ones, Dry Fontenin, right? I think they make some. I know I've had them. I don't know that I could place one. Actually, let me, let me look at them tapped. But now I'm, now I'm wondering if they're all Goes styles or if they were original true, true blue Goes. I would imagine, unless you like got a true blue Goes, like unless you know if a true blue Goes, it's probably not, right? So. Yeah, that sucks. Filter. By style, mm-hmm. three sour fruited goes and one sour goes. Yeah, so those are bastardized ones. East Rock Brewing Company's Blackberry goes. Oh, Green oh. Zebra is apparently a goes. Have you had Founders Green Zebra? Probably. I don't remember it. I love it. That's one of my favorite. Just beers. I don't know if it's a true goes or not, but it's sour. But it's like sweet also. Uh, Flying Fish has Salt and Sea, and Angry Chair has Blackberry Key. Ooh, you had that with us. You definitely had the Angry Chair with us, and you definitely had the East Rock with us. Blackberry Key Lime goes. I had on June 9th. Oh, that's your birthday, right? Yeah. 2018. I think Where did I check it in? Universal. Oh, that would make sense. Yeah. Oh, at Angry Chair Brewing in Tampa. Yep. Mm-hmm. See? Told you. With the Uno cards in the background that we were playing Uno at that brewery. 
There you go. And then weirdly, oh, that's so weird. I had Green Zebra for the first time on June 9th, 2019, the year later. But I remember I had that at a bar near here. But I just had two, uh, two ghosts for the first time on your birthday. <laughs> June 8th, years. the day after. The day after. Okay, sorry. Yes, yeah, day after. This is a weird intro, man. We're going down a lot of rabbit holes. I like it. But it's just, <laughs> fuck, what the fuck is that? I don't know. <laughs> it's, not, it's not bad. It's just like... Damn, dude. I think because I know that we don't have a guest in there, I'm just like, hey, it can be a little bit longer. Yeah, fucking it send it. Shorter. Blue Laws. Joe, too, was talking about somewhere where, because the Blue Laws, they had special versions of Bud Light and such. Welcome to Minnesota. That's us. Oh. You can only buy 3.2% ABV alcohol from gas stations and grocery stores here. Well, I will say in New That's Jersey, right. gas stations and grocery stores don't sell liquor at all, so you have a leg up on us. Pennsylvania was, like, super rigid forever, and Connecticut's not much better. It's, it's a pain in my ass, but yeah. Although I wonder, you know, that now that New Jersey just legalized recreational marijuana, I wonder, like, I think, like, liquor licenses are such a big a big business in New Jersey, right? Like, they're so expensive. Also, also, you have, like, the history of, like, them fucking it up for so many years. Yeah, yeah. That, like, to undo the tape of it is such a pain. Like, I remember Connecticut had, like, this big thing that was, like, how many ounces you were allowed to buy at one time from a brewery because, like... Dumb. Oh, no, fucker. This is what it is. In Rhode Island, you can't buy more than 96 ounces at a time. You're allowed to buy more than that in a day, but just at a time. So when I would go to Rhode Island, we would buy beers, and they'd be like, okay, you can only walk out a case and a half at a time. You could pay for it all in one order, but you're only <laughs> allowed to put it... And I was like, this makes no fucking... S so, like, you'd have to, like, get the beer. He'd be like, okay, here it is, and he sets it yeah. on the counter, and you take, like... He, a half a case out at a time and you put it in your car and you just the have to dumbest. make two two or three trips for no reason other than like so that's, dumb i know right Dude. so dumb so dumb yeah but like what what that leads to in new jersey is that like every grocery store basically has like a liquor store like that the grocery chain owns right next door so it's like you go to wegmans uh. and there's like the wegmans liquor store like that's a separate thing but it's like in the grocery store but it's like you have to check out separately but like it's it's just it's dumb you know what i mean Stupid. but whatever yep yeah. Yep. We have all these low alcohol versions of Miller, Bud, and even Corona. Also, in the last 10 years, these laws have changed for the better. Breweries can sell their own beer now, and liquor stores can be open on Sunday, but car dealerships can't. Okay. <laughs> Dom Toretto would hate it there. I know. Well, I mean, like, in, in North Jersey, like, in Bergen County, like, nothing can be open on Sundays. Like, the whole <sighs> county is shut down on Sunday, so. Bless the Puritans. Valentine's Day. Special thanks to Joe, too, for pasta-making tips. Rachel and he gave us some tips to make our own pasta. It turned out great, and it was a lot of fun to do. Rachel didn't have a real recipe. So he asked us, like, what's Rachel's recipe? And I asked Rachel. I'm like, oh, yeah, she has recipe. And Rachel's like, no, I just make it by feel. And I was like, yeah. well, that fucking sucks for him, <laughs> like, to to share but like thank you and i mean she does all the cooking a large majority of everything she does a large large majority of everything in the house but she like found a recipe to send to and gave all the tips to Justin. Yeah, like my friend Desiree, who listens to the show, I think sometimes, and I've talked about him here before. She's a great cook, and but like we've talked that about that before. She's like, you know, people ask me for recipes, and like she sent me like what her recipe looks like, and like it, it's nonsense. It's just like it's like six little things that there's no steps, there's no even like amounts or ingredients. It's just like six things. It's just like this is the recipe. It's like I, this is what I need to like make the thing, but it's just she just knows it in her soul, right? So yeah. Rachel's gotten Rachel is really good and she has this like cool app I forget maybe it's called paprika or something what's your app called paprika yeah and she like has this like cool recipe app that she uses on her phone and then like as she tweaks them she's made a lot of her recipes solid in that and you can like scale from it because it's like a digital app right so cool. um yeah. yeah so like whenever we share recipes with matt and stuff of like food that we're making she sends him that and she keeps it like she like if we like change it right she'll like go in and just edit and be like oh no we did two tablespoons this time instead of one and eventually we've gotten to cool. like a streamlined point yeah does matt still have the cooler he d he definitely still does he's moved like 50 times in atlanta now well here atlanta is where the players play so maybe he's trying to find <laughs> it's gonna be an all-timer tonight yeah meat waffle a restaurant near me sells a belgian waffle with ham sausage bacon and cheddar cheese cooked in it so Sounds good Oof. Del fucking delightful i wish i could get you know what? I probably could convince Rachel to do more of this at home. But the thing is, is like I don't clean the waffle maker, and she gets really mm. mad about that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Even if I make like blueberry ones, she it's just blueberry chaos for, and she gets angry at me. So it's not this exactly, but uh, Taco Bell just announced that they are doing a chicken sandwich taco, but I only heard. in Nashville and Charleston, maybe. Well, that's just the test markets. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like a chicken, it's like a fried chicken, whatever, in a taco. 
So looks I great, but you know, not here. I want it. I want it bad. Apparently, at McDonald's just redid their chicken. The chicken sandwich wars are fucking awesome, by the way. That was like one of the greatest things to come out of quarantine. Oh yeah, because Popeye brought the heat. Popeye's brought the heat with a delicious sandwich, and now people are like, well, shit, we gotta, we gotta step it up. You know, good old Chick Fil A was just like our pleasure. We're not changing shit. I can't tell you the percentage of times that I want Chick Fil A. That's a Sunday, and I'm like, well, not gonna happen this week. Every single time. Yep. If you're having a Chick Fil A craving, it is a Sunday. That's yep. just like the way to know the. If, if I was on a desert island, I would keep track of dates by by how much i wanted chick-fil-a and be like oh it must be sunday check it makes me feel like uh that i'm doing the right thing by not supporting the anti-lgbt company that oh is yeah Chick-fil-A because like uh hate. oh right it, it's sunday i can't so like because i only like there's none close to me so i either have to go like on a i was just like I have to go on a saturday or a sunday but like they're not open sunday so like it has to be a saturday so just like well i gotta wait six days and like i'm on saturday morning i'm like i'm not gonna go to chick-fil-a and then it's the next day i'm like well shit i should have went to chick-fil-a god damn yeah. it yeah glass blowing bongs i have a friend who's a glass blower and runs the city's biggest glass collective Ooh, she absolutely hates it when people ask her to make bongs i guess it's an insult to the craft for artists yes that's the whole degenerate art documentary like like some people are like look they're making bongs but it's still art and then some people are like this is art why do you have to put a fucking you know slide in it so that's how it works man and finally i was recognized in an annual meeting recently for some work i did i was told to come into the shop and pick up a gift card as a thank you for the work i did okay. it was for subway Ugh. <laughs> of all the places i don't want to go to during a pandemic later family justin yeah connecticut's finest sorry bud i'm also going to send you on facebook the pictures that he attached these are his notes docs it's just uh like work work papers that he just scribbles notes on <laughs> I love it. It's like Seinfeld, Simpsons, new member Monica, Friday Night Lights, Hamburgers, Nico Kevo, Glass voice. blowing bongs, Damn a letter. phone number. <laughs> I love it. Super it's beautiful. Cool. Thank, well, thank you, Thank you, brother. Justin. It was great to hear from you. If you want to email in family at cageclub.me, shout out to everybody who wrote in. And once again, happy birthday to Jason. Happy birthday, Jason. Happy 30th, man. It's like all downhill from here. That's all I can say about that. I mean, that's how it felt to me. We have a store. Uh, what, is, what is it? Too fast, too far, shop. Get you there? <laughs> Probably. Oh, also, so by the way, I, I tweeted this. Um, while we were watching the X-Files, there's this episode called Teso Dos Bichos, um, which I don't remember. It's like these, like, ancient it translates to like these burial mounds that like have like religious properties or whatever okay and it's not a good episode and apparently making it was a nightmare and i don't know why but it was like this whole like bonding thing on set where like the director and all the actors were like we cannot like we got to get through this and so the director made these shirts it's a teso dos bicho survivor and my friend that we're watching he's like i need one of those shirts and so like i went online and i downloaded the x files font and i threw into Photoshop, Teso Dos Bicho Survivor, and I created my own tea public store, and I put up... Uh, you could have put it on too fast. I could have, but, like, it's also... It makes... I mean, whatever. It's it's fine. Why would you... Why would you not have? It would have just been, like, a weird thing. It doesn't matter. Like, there's no difference. Like, it all goes <laughs> to my PayPal anyway. <laughs> yeah. We, my friend bought the three shirts, and so we're, I'm going to get the $9 back that we get as the profit, because, like, I, you know, like we said, we can't set prices. We can't buy things at nope. our own cost. Nope. So, like, I will be stunned... If literally anyone else buys it, because like it is such a niche shirt. Um, oh yeah, and like the search on T Public is not great. But no, nope. boy, oh boy, uh, Good luck. it's it's a funny shirt. I hope I hope you sell like seventy thousand of these. Well, it's the thing. Like if you if you Google like Teso Dos Bicho Survivor, and like I just took the like trivia on IMDb and put it as the item description. The item shipped. Like worst case, they shut down my store. Like you don't have permission. But it's just it's it's letters on a shirt. Like I don't know why. Yeah, I that but, that like, means nothing. There, uh, there's right. not there's not like a copyright on that. I don't think right so like, yeah the shirts are in the mail so uh that's the important thing but teso dos bicho survivor if you want to uh support me on my t public or just too fast you've ever done shop for things that actually kind of make shirts. sense but yeah, yeah seriously joe on the streets news about the fast and furious anything that has caught your eye recently there is something actually that jason sent in i don't know if you saw it or not something that's kind of cool to us and i think that you'll like this when you hear it and i'm sure that we're both going to get one funko as in funko pop is um turning fast and furious into a board game Ooh. Yeah, so there will be a Funko board game called Highway Heist, and it's going to be 30 bucks, little plastic cars, you know, board game shit. So I think it'll be fun. We should probably get it and try to play it. Oh, for sure. That's super cool. Yeah. A that cooperative was like, strategy game by Prospero Hall. Very cool. Very, very cool. I think that it'll be, even if this doesn't go great, this is one of these things, like, you have the Monopoly game at this point, like, you 
you probably should add this to the collection, right? I'm going to get one. Uh, what I should do is email Prospero Hall and be like, hey, can you send us copies? Like, there was a guy who That's made a Nicolas a Cage card game idea. who emailed us and was like, hey, if you if you if if we send you a copy, can you talk about it on the podcast? I was like, I don't think you understand how many people listen to this podcast, but yeah, absolutely. And so you, I think we might have even play the Cage it. Club. Yeah, it was cool. Was it was it? a fun game. It was like it was like Old Maid, I think, but it was like uh, with Nicolas Cage. Yes, that's right. We did play it. That's absolutely right. I remember that. Yeah. Okay, so, Prospero Games. Send us one. We'll review it for you. Yeah, it's set to release in May. Yeah, so I will. I will do this. Anything else that you've seen? Um, no, that was like the that was like the main thing that caught my eye this week. So there is there's more news, or I mean, and by news, I mean that's a very strong term for like no updates on what's happening with F9 and Widow and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't know why it's this week. I don't think it's upfronts, but like Disney announced dates for all of their. TV series like the Star Wars stuff and like the Marvel stuff and, this and that and whatever was the big and thing. Spider-Man name yeah. but then today as we're recording this Wednesday the 24th Paramount Plus which is the old CBS All Access rebranded that was every fifth commercial at the Super Bowl did like another like 100 news announcements so there's two things that kind of sort of relate to us so number one the Viacom CBS new film strategy for theatrical windows so of particular note to us meaning the network is like mission impossible seven and top gun maverick so there are going to be like 30 or 45 day for bigger movies like those gonna be 45 days theatrically just okay. like only in theaters and then after 45 days they will be on paramount plus for i guess for free i mean you pay the eight bucks or ten bucks or whatever a month to get the service just like you would anything else but then after 45 days it's there so like if you can wait a month and a half after a movie comes out you don't want to see it in theaters at home so like that's not as good as like the 28 day turnaround that like universal has but not terrible not bad no not bad so that's one thing so maybe we'll see f9 i don't know but the other thing of note to the show is that they announced like all these adaptations like they're rebooting frazier finally officially what they're really all these other things yes and not even like not remaking like with with kelsey Grammer in it they're just doing the kind of like their new episodes or whatever nostalgia man but also nostalgia they announced a sequel series to the original italian job which we covered on this very podcast they're doing a sequel series to the 1969 film the italian job also oh, to love story original. fail attraction parallax view and flash dance yeah damn okay that's cool we like the italian job that was like one of the best movies yeah, in the Italian Job series, when the grandchildren of the legendary Charlie Croker inherit his old safety deposit box, the quest for the infamous Italian bullion is reignited. Oof. I like it. Sounds spicy. Yeah. I hope we start on the fucking cliff, right? Like, that has to be where this movie starts. I hope so. No, but it's going to be the grandson, so who knows? Who who could play Michael Caine's grandson? Tom Holland. Um. He wouldn't do a TV series, I don't think. Um... Who's going to play Michael Caine's grandson? Your boy, Timothy Chalamet? Timothy Chalamet. That's exactly who's going to play him. Any other news that you have seen? Because I think Timothy Chalamet is a good casting there. But any other news that you have seen? <laughs> I don't think there's anything that I've, I've gotten. I should be Timothy Chalamet's agent. I put him in fucking everything. You sure do. I should get I should get props for that. Like, like, look, guys, let me tell you this. Timothy Chalamet. <laughs> like, that's, yeah. Like, what, you, you need a new Batman? Timothy Chalamet. <laughs> Michael Caine's son from The Italian Job? Timothy Chalamet's free. Yeah, he could play uh, Michael Cage's grandson there, and then also uh, Alfred's grandson in the Dark Knight reboot. That isn't happening, but, you know, could be. What was the the Jennifer Lopez stripper movie? Hustlers. Be like, Hustlers 2, Timothy Chalamet. That's, uh, yeah, okay. I don't know if he's a body for that, but maybe. <laughs> hey, who are you going to tell him no? He did Edward Scissorhands. He looked good in, like, leather and tall and lanky. Also, just once again, shout out to Magic Mike XXL, one of the most perfect movies that's ever been made. Even if you're a straight dude, go watch it because it's just nothing but pure optimism and joy and sex positivity. First movie's really good. Second movie is an absolute fucking blast. So, Magic Mike XXL. And also go listen to Magic Mike's, the podcast that we gave up on. Yeah. There's like a dozen episodes. So, yeah. go check that out. Young Rock episode two was last night on The Road Again, and it was another good episode. Uh, yeah, I like this one. I listened to a Pat McAfee show. Pat McAfee show had this, like, very, like, I, w I turned it on when Carson Wentz got traded. Like, I'm not really watching it every day right now because it's not, like, in season, right? So, like, mm -hmm. they, they're definitely stretching it. It's three hours. Love the, like, I love the show, but the, I watch it on YouTube. But it's, like, three hours, and there's not really sports news happening, right? So, sure, yep. But I was watching it the day that Carson Wentz got traded to the Colts. One of the, like, I guess recurring jokes, because that was, like, a Wednesday, maybe? Or that, no, that was a Thursday, 
they were talking about that in the studio they're they're in a big divide people that love young rock and then people that think it sucks like really like, yeah like in their studio they're like no it's like it's fucking joyous this is a great show and then there's other guys who are like that show stinks like from the background <laughs> so like wow I, I don't, okay i don't know if it's like a bit that they're doing probably is you know what i mean because a lot of these there's like seven of them or whatever in the studio i'm sure it's a bit of a bit but the large majority of them really love the show and then there's like a couple dissenters that don't like it but um i was thinking about us whenever i was watching pat mcafee because in rachel we're like she's like somebody was like like oh young rock that show stinks and she was like what what did they watch <laughs> like this is great and i was like yeah and then like you know the, obviously pat mcafee and like some of the other guys were like what are you guys talking about you're stupid i think the worst case scenario of what you could say about the show is like I don't need to watch this but like I don't think there's anything to point to like that's not good like it's just like yeah maybe it's a little corny but like it, that, that's not like reason to shit on it like it's no. it's, jo- it's like heartfelt and, and great like it's again really fun no huge fast connections in episode two not that there are going to be but like a blast this isn't really a spoiler but he keeps talking about his shoplifting and I've, I want to know if this is like a cathartic experience for for the rock oh like, maybe because he's like he's like really trying to like talk through his shoplifting in his youth and i'm like dude it's cool we get it it's like, okay yeah yeah it's nobody's okay. judging you about it but he keeps like bringing it up and be like i had a shoplift here you're like yeah dude you're rich now like you were a dumb kid it's okay like mm-hmm. nobody's gonna arrest you for shoplifting when you were 15 it's totally statute fun. of limitations baby yeah but beyond that you're like yeah, you were 15. It's okay. Like, 15 yeah. and poor. I get it. Don't worry about it, bud. But he keeps, like, yeah. And Randall Park in it is great. There wasn't really any fast connections this time. You're absolutely right. He does but... work at a pizza place. I'm like, Gallows? But it's like El Nostimo, which, like, yeah. again, you know, the languages are very similar. That sounds more Spanish than Italian, El Nostimo, but... Uh, yeah. I don't know. Fun. Good episode. If you're not watching it, go check it out. NBC on Tuesday nights or Hulu on Wednesdays. So Yeah, we watch it on Hulu on Wednesdays. And actually, we tried to watch it last night after Temptation Island, and it doesn't come on until Wednesdays at 5 a.m. Yeah. So we were like, God oh, damn, dude. Like we, Because we, we were like, you know, we had watched the Penguin game. We watched Temptation Island. We're like, let's get some Young Rock to like round this night out, right? Like a little bit of everything. You can't watch it till the... Definitely the next day. Nope. Oh, there was one thing that was like, um, I found that it was a fast connection, and that's that in school, the principal thinks that he's a cop undercover. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, The Rock was a narc and a cop in real life at 15, and now yeah. he plays Hobbs, who's the best cop ever, so. Yeah, because like the whole, like one of the running jokes is like high school rock, which is like the middle-aged that's the wrong way to say it, but there's like the middle school, then the high school, then the college rock. So the one in the middle, the high school age one, he's got to be like six two and like just like has full mustache and just yeah. like he just he's a man, right? Like he's just like he's a man. Like he's like LeBron when he came out of high school and like went to the Cavs. Like he's just like he's just a built like a, a full grown adult. And so like the bus driver's like, get out of here, perv! Like you can't get, like I'm not. Yeah. You, it's funny that the principal, you're right, is just like, hey, like let me, let me buy you a steak. Let's let me find out what's going on in the school. It's like, dude, like I'm just a student. Like like I'm literally just a student. Like as much as you think that he's like, yeah, you can't talk about. I get it. The final thing to do before we take a break and talk about Game of Death is to talk about the Fast and the Furious Minute, the turbocharged prelude, Minute 5, a title that will become apparent in our discussion, a minute I called Letty? With a question mark. So in this minute, Brian continues his cross-country drive. He's approached by four bikers on two bikes who want to race, but Brian turns them down. Soon, he sees they were pulled over by a cop who glares at Brian as he flies by. On a country road somewhere, Brian wins another street race, cash, and respect. And as the minute ends, we see a highway sign for Miami. So the reason I named this, as I did, 
one of the women, I don't know if you caught it. I mean, I know that you probably watched it a bunch of times. I did. watched it six or eight times. And I thought the same thing. Go ahead. There's two dudes on bikes. There's a two white guys, one guy with like good hair and one bald guy. And then one dude has, they both have a woman behind them. And one has like an attractive Asian woman. And one has an attractive, I can't tell if it's a white woman or Hispanic woman. Because again, it might be, it might be generous. And it's also, yeah. yeah. But this woman looks like Letty. Like, Shockingly like, like Letty. Like, like like insanely close to Michelle Rodriguez. Yes. It's like the way she's standing, the way she has her hair, the way she's dressed, and just the way she looks. And I'm like, there's no way that that's her. It's crazy how much she looks like Letty. I totally agree. I thought that when I watched it, I actually rewound specifically like that one second. I was like, I know it's not her, but like I looked again. And then I see in the notes that you were like, is that Letty? <laughs> like, does this she look like Letty? She she looks a lot like Letty. I'm 100% with you. It's crazy. It's wild. Yeah. My question to you, I don't, again, If I think if he was somebody, he would be Go ahead. IMDb. But like, and is I the guy that Brian you. beats... Is he anybody of note? So I looked up every possible outlet that I could think of to try to find if he was someone. And I even went and watched that specific clip from the Craig Lieberman video about okay. the mm-hmm. turbocharged prelude. Craig Lieberman doesn't even address him. He says <laughs> that the car was a rental from somewhere. It means nothing and just skips along. Because it's a dude who's dressed... Like a early 2000s rapper. I 1000% agree. I thought it was almost Trick Daddy. That's who I was thinking it kind of looked like to me. Like, it would be cool. Like, again, this this short has absolutely no sense of time or place or pace or anything. But it would be anything. cool if they're like, if they show like the background, they're like, oh, he's in Atlanta now. And they have some like, even if it's not like a famous rapper, but like a famous in Atlanta rapper or whatever. Yep. Who's just like. Who was happened know, to be in LA when they were shooting on that one exactly. street. Yeah. But instead, it's just like a dude who's just like, kind of looks like Exhibit, kind of looks like a bunch of different people. And it's just, you know. He's yeah, wearing, exhibit. he's got jewelry, he's got the clothing, he's got the, 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 the braids, he's got everything. It's just like, this seems like he's somebody, and like, nope. again, not even uncredited on IMDb, so he can't be anybody. Yeah. No offense to this man. I'm sorry to this man. He definitely had the look down. I thought that it, they could have snuck somebody in, but like, somebody would have noticed that or said it, right? So, but you're right. I, I, I thought Trick Daddy, you thought Exhibit, it, it could be either, I don't know. So. I don't know. Only other thing that I want to uh, make note of here is that the final, uh, again, this is only something that you would notice if you're watching this six or eight times in a row and you're pausing to take notes about things. Yes. But in the final two shots of this minute, before we see the sign, there's the shot of uh, just a woman's thong, basically, like her her midriff, like it's like a bra yep. and her underwear. And it's just like the guy passing money to Brian. Because he That shot race. and the next shot where he's driving away, clothing, like lettering on clothing is flipped like it's mirrored so like for yes some reason, i noticed this too yep these yep, shots yep. are just mirrored and i i don't, I don't know why because like it doesn't it's like oh we can't have him driving left because that's like signifying he's going west or whatever it's like no he's just driving straight in one shot he's driving away yeah he's just yeah. driving like away from the camera so like i don't know why they flipped that shot but they did and i noticed it because i was trying to like read whatever the guy's shirt was um, which i'm sure you were doing too and i was like oh f- why is it mirrored this makes no fucking sense it's the dumbest thing like there's no it's reason very for dumb because if he's because if they're on the left side as opposed to the right side what the fuck does it matter if he's driving away nope. like doesn't, doesn't make matter. any sense what did you uh notice about this minute again i'm so thankful we only have one more then we get into too fast but anything of note here the bikes that they're driving in that they race that brian kind of like races but then get pulled over that we were uh-huh. talking about with letty on uh-huh. them they're suzuki gsx 1300r hayabusas okay okay hayabusas are interesting to me for one reason that was the motorcycle that Ben Roethlisberger was driving when he wrecked it and wasn't wearing a helmet. Remember this? I do. Also, shout out to Coach Tomlin, who has COVID now. Yeah, he, he seems like he's doing good, but they released a statement and stuff. That's cool. Ben Roethlisberger was wearing, was riding a Hayabusa, so this is tattooed in my brain because it was like every news station for a month in Pittsburgh was talking about his Hayabusa, what kind of motorcycle it was, because like that's where I was at the time. Special to us. That's mm-hmm. a huge hint. The Hayabusa is also featured in what movie that you and I have watched together? Oh, okay. Because I see here in the notes, also in the movie, and then I thought I was like, which which movie are we talking about here? I didn't I didn't put it in because I wanted you to guess. The Hayabusa is also in the movie. It's is like it... smack in your face, dude. Uh, Kill Bill. No. Is it like is it Gone in sixty? No. Is it's, it the Italian? It's job? very on the nose. Like it's it's in this movie, and you're like. 
Of course, it's in this movie. Uh, I mean, is it? Is it's not a Fast and Furious though? Like, it's not. It's not a Fast and Furious movie. It's another movie we covered for a different podcast we did. Oh, Moto uh, Supercross. Yes, it's in Supercross. Very cool. Very very cool. It's Rowdy Sparks himself. <laughs> <laughs> and I just was talking about Supercross the other day on here for uh -huh. some reason. Yeah. So like when I I clicked Hayabusa to see like what other movies it was in, and I was like, oh shit, it's in Supercross. Uh, that, if you're listening out there, you do not need to see the movie Supercross. I think you do need to see the movie Supercross because. Fair. It's Walmart. This is dollar bin Walmart special. Like yeah. this is like barely media. It's great. I liked it. <laughs> Anything else of note in this minute that you saw? You have in the notes um, the jackets. I found what kind of jackets that he's using. It's a, it's Joe Rocket motorcycle gear. Um, obviously, I couldn't find the jacket because it's twenty years old now at uh -huh. this point. But um, they have jackets that look very similar to it, and I linked the Joe Rocket motorcycle gear page there. Shout out. Joe Rocket. Yeah. Well, let's take a break then and let us come back to talk about not Joe Rocket, but uh, yellow tracksuits as we talk about Game of Death. episode number 167 game of death this episode is brought to you by the bruce lee shop shop.brucelee.com and it is brought to you by the bruce and kareem collaboration collection and there's a cool little story here that um they were actually student and teacher kareem abdul jabbar actually would babysit brandon lee sometimes i didn't know that that's really cool well shout out to the bruce lee shop and welcome back to too fast too forever so okay so game of death the reason we're doing Game of Death is because, like we mentioned, I think in the top half, Justin Lin directed the movie Finishing the Game. There's yes. some subtitle, I don't know what it is, which we're covering Patreon exclusive on TooFast2Forever.com. So, you know, we were doing specifically like Japanese directors and Japanese actors or whatever. We sort of expanded it out to Asian cinema in general. But I knew that we wanted to do a Bruce Lee movie, but we did Game of Death because, specifically because of the Justin Lin connection. I'd never seen, I don't think, any Bruce Lee movie, which is still sort of shocking to me. Any at all until today? I don't like, until think this so. Time. Like I, yeah, I, I bought the, the Criterion collection, which I'm very glad about, which I will talk about why. But this is like the first real, I think, Bruce Lee movie that I've seen, I think. And uh, I want to say, and I know this might be kind of a hot take, it kind of sucks. There's obviously problems with this one yeah. for many reasons. The fight scene at the end is is classic. Right. The rest of the movie, not very good. That's not a hot take. It's it's okay. So I think to uh, explain myself and why, you know, you who have, is, you know, it's I don't think it's a secret that you love Bruce Lee. I mean, I rightfully do. so. And like you talked about like how you like this movie. Like it's not, it's not Bruce Lee's fault like i'll explain so go ahead he had directed uh the way of the dragon so that was the first movie he directed i think it came out in the early 70s and so he was going to direct this one too called game of death and in the middle of filming game of death hollywood warner brothers came to him and they said we're gonna we want you to star in this movie called enter the dragon and it's gonna have a oh, budget God. of eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and that's like an astronomical sum for this kind of genre and like we would love for you to like basically pause your production and come be in this movie and bruce lee's like i, I have to do this like it's gonna bring you know kung fu to the west and it's gonna you know make me a bigger name and whatever yeah. um, i did see though I, I will say that i saw the 30 for 30 be water which came out last summer which is about bruce lee and just you know basically this decade of his life. So he had filmed like over 30 minutes of fight scenes for Game of Death and like over 100 minutes total for the movie, but paused it to go do this movie. Uh, but before he could return, Bruce Lee died. Mm -hmm. Just way too young, but he died. Um, like I think it was like an accidental overdose. Like he wasn't addicted to drugs. I think it was like a, a bad mixture of medication or something. Like it was some like terribly tragic, like shouldn't have happened, but it happened. Yeah. Like six years later, in 1978, the guy who directed Enter the Dragon, Robert Klaus, uh, was asked to basically turn Game of Death into a movie. I think it's understandable because, like, if you watch Game of Death, like, the end of this, like, the pagoda fight, it's like, yeah, this- Fucking badass. It's awesome. It's, like, one of the coolest- Yes, thank you. Uh, okay, if you can admit that, that's all that you need to take away if from this. If you have, like, this 20 or 30 minutes and you're like, hey, make a movie out of this, it's. I think it's kind of hard to say no because it's like the world kind of- deserves to see this, this amazing part. stuff right yeah i agree so robert klaus is like cool i'll do that so what he did was he made a feature 
out of the footage that he had there. And he had two stand-ins for Bruce Lee. He also had cardboard cutouts in one or two scenes, which is like hilariously bad in a way that's yes. not supposed to be hilariously bad. Originally, in Bruce Lee's Game of Death, it was going to be a movie about... This is also like the most complicated wikipedia thing that i've ever seen because like it's, it's got two different sections um because there's game of death like the bruce lee one and there's a game of death like the robert klaus one so like yes, in yeah. the original game of death he gets confronted by the korean gang like uh the korean underworld um and they kidnap his siblings and he has to go fight to get them back like it's kind yeah. of a simple premise that he whatever pretty much bruce lee was making a showcase to yeah. get to this fight scene right mm -hmm. that's the whole movie was like he was just some kind of story and the idea is great right because the fight scene is like you just fight up this pagoda and like every level you go up you fight a different boss like it's very video gamey it's it's awesome it's great to see yep. the choreography is great but like it, the movie didn't even matter what bruce lee was trying to make he's trying right. to make this fight scene is yeah. essentially what's happening and i have trivia about the video game stuff that i will so that's a very great way to describe it it is very video gamey so the movie that robert klaus made was that this guy is, um, he's like a, a big time Asian actor, um, yep. it's a martial arts star. They actually show scenes, like the movie starts with the end of Return of the Dragon when he's fighting Chuck Norris. Yes, and Chuck Norris great movie was too. furious that really? he got credit for this because he's like, I, so I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Okay, go ahead. So the movie that he made was about this guy who's like uh, becoming the star and like the, again, the Korean mob is like, hey, we want to exploit you. And he's like, no. The Korean mob wants to, like, kill him, so they shoot him. Um, it's supposed to be, like, this blank, and they shoot him in the face, yeah, and so he goes to the hospital. Bullet. Yeah. Which, by the way, Brandon Lee, his son, died same kind of way. You know that? Like, he was shot with a bullet that was supposed to be a blank, but it was, like, a real bullet, or, like, the blank killed him or whatever. So, like, while filming this. The Crow, he kind of died the way that his dad, like, fake died in this movie, where he actually really died, or whatever, right? That's right. Weird. I remember so that vaguely. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Bruce Lee's character goes to the hospital, Billy Lowe goes to the hospital, and he's like, I need to get out from under the thumb of this Korean gangster, or whatever. Because they're chasing down him and his girlfriend, because his girlfriend's a singer, he's an actor. Yes. They're trying to, like, yes. employ them, but really just exploit them he's like i need to get out from under this i'm gonna fake my own death and so he fakes his own death and then there's like 45 minutes of the movie that he's not in and it's like this sucks like this is really bad yeah she's just like in a mental hospital which is weird yeah what's really tacky is they use like in in the movie they show uh the character's funeral and they use actual footage from bruce lee's funeral Ugh. in this fucking movie like Ugh. what the fuck are you thinking that's not good i didn't know that part that's not very good at all. So what Robert Klaus wound up using from what Bruce Lee had shot was mostly just the end of the movie. And there was only like about 11 minutes of stuff, 11 minutes and seven seconds of original footage. So instead he took stock footage of Bruce Lee from like movies before Enter the Dragon, which you can tell because it looks nothing like the rest of the movie. Like it's all oh, yeah. grainy, shitty film stock. Yep. And even on the Criterion like remastered, it's like, oh, this looks wildly different. Yep. There's like the cardboard cutout, like I was saying. There's like yep. original footage. Like they also had shot stuff that like Golden Heart the production studio just like lost so kareem abdul jabbar who is in this movie as hakeem because like we mentioned before you mentioned his uh collection on the bruce lee's shop yes uh, he was like a pupil like a student of bruce lee's yeah they were training together yeah they were buddies mm -hmm. and he was in the movie and he's kind of like the ultimate like he's basically the head boss in bruce lee's movie he makes him yeah he makes him like the the super boss at the end yeah robert klaus says to kareem like i want you to come back and help me finish this movie he says no i'm not gonna do it because he's like i don't i don't want to so like they get a guy who like he's also like a seven two black man who like like doubles kareem like it's very weird <sighs> They also tried to get Steve McQueen, James Coburn, and Muhammad Ali, but they all said no because they thought it was going to exploit Bruce Lee's death. And also Gar Golden Harvest paid for shit. So, like, they're just like, not only you offend me with your pay, but, like, you're also going to offend me, like, by trying to tarnish Bruce Lee's legacy or whatever. Yeah. And then Chuck Norris, like I said, threatened legal action because he was given screen credit because he's only in archival footage from The Way of the Dragon, which is the movie that Bruce Lee directed. So, like, this movie starts with him fighting Bruce Lee and then, like, you know, whatever. And I'm like, oh, this is... It's so weird. Yeah. That all said. So the movie, the end, the, the pagoda fight, which is like what people remember from this. It was supposed to have five floors, but they only shot three of them. It's the Temple of the Tiger, the Dragon, and the Unknown. And the Unknown is where he fights Kareem. Yes. And this was meant to all showcase his beliefs that uh, about the principles of martial arts. And then he's 
As each one is defeated, their fighting style flaws are revealed, and sometimes they rely too much on fixed patterns, some lack economy of motion, whatever, yeah. and Bruce Lee wins by being unpredictable, whatever, right? Okay, fast forward like 20 years to like the year 2000. So there is Bruce Lee historian John Little puts out a documentary called Bruce Lee, A Warrior's Journey, and there's also a film from Japan called Bruce Lee in G.O.D., and then there's another thing that we're going to talk about called The Game of Death Redux. Okay. And so there's all these things that kind of like try to make something out of this movie that like wasn't finished even weirder than that there is a game of death 2 that uses what? footage from bruce lee stuff but like bruce lee's like not the main character like bruce lee dies in game of death 2 and then like the main character i think is like his character's son or something but it really has nothing to do with this movie it's just like a cash grab for like hey we're a sequel to game of death but it's like stop trying to like <laughs> explain manipulate this, man. this yeah. movie yeah yeah god damn okay the cool thing and this is this is going to be again i don't think a hot take two years ago july 2019 on the 46th anniversary of his death uh, this guy alan canvan who's a producer premiered the game of death redux at an asian american asian research institute in new york and so this is a 34 minute essentially short film that criterion put out on the blu-ray and it takes the uh original fights and footage and everything that bruce lee had shot mm -hmm. it takes the original scoring from that movie oh that's cool different end credits and everything and also has like you know the original dialogue and just puts it together in the way that it is so like as Bruce Lee is fighting up, he's got these friends there, and his friends are trying to, like, help him out, but, like, they kind of suck, and, like, they're trying to fight, and, like, one guy goes and runs up against Kareem, and it gets kicked down immediately, like, and so it's, like, the same kind of fights. It's the, yeah, it's pretty much the same thing, like, but in Game of Death, they cut out the two other guys. Yes. And there's, like, less, they give Bruce Lee no dialogue in Game of Death, which is fucking weird, because he has, like, some dialogue in the Redux, and it's mm -hmm. great, and, like, why do they not use that? If you have such limited footage, why not just... Yeah, it doesn't make any sense, but okay. So my real hot take before we go further, this movie is, uh, I think, available for free on, like, Pluto and stuff, but I okay. would say, if you want to see Game of Death, don't watch Game of Death. Find the Redux. It's on the Criterion Blu-ray. I think you could maybe find it online. I'm not sure. But I think this 34-minute thing, like, there were, like, five or six things in this Redux that I enjoyed more than anything in the entire Game of Death. Like... Every time that Bruce Lee is not on screen in Game of Death, I'm just like, I don't give a shit. Okay. There's the line that he has in the Redux. And again, okay. this goes back to what you're saying about his spoken dialogue. And he asks the first guy he's fighting, he's like, do you speak English? The guy says, of course I speak English. And he says, I hope you don't I mind. I hope you don't mind if we move our man so that the two of us will have more room to groove. And I was like, holy shit, like, that's so cool. It's and so like, fucking cool, right? Don't yeah. use that in the movie. It's like, what the fuck are you doing? So this is cool. If you like this, then you understand parts of the reasons why people love Bruce Lee movies. Because yeah. this isn't yeah. like, yes, okay, cool. So you so you are, you, you would be a fan. Like, you oh, would no, like I the would other be a ones. fan. Yes. Like, I, I liked, so the way that I put it on Letterboxd, I was like, the first, like, 80 minutes of Game of Death, because, like, an hour, it's like an hour 40, it's like just over an hour, an hour and a half, right? The first, like, 80 minutes are, like, it's like a one and a half star movie, because, like, it's not Bruce Lee, it's nope. not a good movie, like, there's nope. there's okay fights, but it's not him, you're not watching for him, and then, like, the last 20 minutes, I'm like, this is, like, five stars, like, this is perfect, it's, it's everything I wanted. Yep, exactly, And then cool. I watched game of death redux and i was like if we would have this movie yeah i like the main movie even less because like this is everything it's like no filler it's no fat it's all the good stuff yep and it's like cooler and it's funnier and yep. it's better and it's like more cohesive and it sounds better and it looks better and like it's just god oh man it's just it's so much better if we would have this full movie how badass would this movie have been it would be the best it would be the best yeah it would be like top tier like one of the greatest movies ever yeah i know that i'm talking a lot but there's a lot of like i just i researched right, so yeah. much like, i'm more about this than anything else because i'm like there's it's so it's so fascinating too fascinating and also like disrespectful in a way that like feels <laughs> like almost blasphemous like again like i get that you want to share this thing with the world but like do what this guy did two years ago and like kind of just take the footage and like put out a 40 like because this movie was successful like it made 100 it, it made the equivalent today of like 170 million at the box office yep mixed reception people are just like it I can't believe you put cardboard cutouts in there. Um, it feels disrespectful. I can't use. I can't believe you like did the whatever. But like, it's not terrible. It's just kind of disappointing, right? But like, do what the guy did and just put like a thirty-five minute like what? Like you have the stuff, right? But you need, so, but you need to make money off of it, dude. Like if you're if you're telling people like this is Bruce Lee's final movie. Like it's not a full movie, but like it's a complete like it's a logical thing. Like people are gonna go see that. Yeah, I would hope. Also, in the other respect, I mean, in the other side of this. 
minus it being flagrantly disrespectful to everything. The cheesiness of them using cardboard cutouts, uh-huh. switching Bruce Lee's at will, right? Like, because there's just, like, scenes that it's definitely Bruce Lee, and then scenes that it's definitely not Bruce Lee, like, side by side. Like, they just switch them out. Like, just no, I mean, yeah. it's very unique in, like, an almost, like, the room kind of way, right? Like, it's just, like, they're using archival footage, and you're like, what the fuck's happening? Like, the whole thing is changing. And we saw things like that now permeate over into stuff like Tarantino, like, when he does weird shit like this, mm-hmm. right? And he's doing it only because, like, this is the shit that he was channeling. If you take the disrespect out of it, this has, like, a very prominent place in culture. As as weird as it is, like, I have to give him credit for, like, okay, so we got, how do we, how do we make a Bruce Lee movie without Bruce Lee? It's like, yeah. okay, we'll get guys who kind of look like him. Small we'll Asian guys that can fight, yeah. Fake his death, and then they'll be wearing, like, crazy beards and sunglasses, and it's just, like, yep. to, like, dumb mainstream white audiences, they're like, that guy looks enough like Bruce Lee, like, that's fine, or whatever. Like, they're like, oh, so we have to give him facial reconstructive surgery, even though, like, at the end of the movie, it's just Bruce Lee. Like, it's, it's, it's so dumb. It's so dumb. It's really, really dumb. But see, isn't there something kind of joyful in that? Uh, like, how silly it is? There is. Like, ah, man. Like, I, I'm glad that I watched the full thing before I saw the Redux, because it made me love the Redux even more. Like, I think the Redux, I would have been like, this is really, really cool. But, like, seeing what they tried to salvage from it before <laughs> I see actually what it could have been, like, it just made what it could have been even better. You know? That's crazy. Yeah, good. That's awesome. Like you were saying, uh, this movie is referenced all over the place. So the movie The Raid, which I think I talked about in here a bunch before, which is an awesome badass movie yes um, yeah it's essentially this right yeah so it's basically uh the movie starts and like there's a bunch of drug dealers in this building they just need to like this SWAT team this cops uh need to fight their way up the building and just like take it out and so it's like the pagoda it's like the levels going up and whatever and like it's one location it's similar plot fucking badass like it's it's awesome yeah this idea is fucking great like this is like one of the greatest fighting movie ideas ever yeah. I think it's just like it's just so perfect. It's mm-hmm. like okay, all in one building. You just go up the ladder and you're just fighting up the thing, and they get stronger as you. It's it's genius. It's so perfect. It's like it's so perfect because it's so simple, right? Like yeah, it just makes perfect sense. You don't need to change locations. You just like make a different set, but whatever. Like for every aspect of this, I'm just like genius. I want to say there's like a Jackie Chan movie, and I might I might be wrong, and I don't know, but there's one that like is like a like a circle, like he's like fighting up like a circular staircase that like surrounds this whole like big tall building, Probably. and like he just keeps fighting his way up. But the fight with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, which we'll talk about, is yes. parodied in another Jackie Chan movie called City Hunter, and then in John Wick Three. I don't know, did you see? Have you seen the John Wicks or no? I saw the first one and possibly the second one. I definitely didn't see the third one. Okay, so in the third one, one of the first guys he fights is. From the, I don't think he's on the team anymore. I don't know where he is now. Uh, but this guy Boban Marjanovic, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, but it's like this, like seven foot tall, like the Sixers' former center. Um, he's just oh. like this huge Euro, like this Slavic dude fighting Keanu Reeves, right? Who's like okay. you know, normal person, and so like it kind of pays homage to that because it's like, of course, yeah, somebody like a normal look, like Bruce Lee was smaller than Keanu, I think, but like Keanu's Very. like a normal sized dude fighting a seven foot tall like probably 280 pounds slavic center right and just like yeah how how, how can you even compare right? the disparity is beautiful like yeah. it's it's one of the coolest things in the movie to me it's just like the shot and, and you get like kareem really tall really dark black guy in like this dark room and then you get like bruce lee who's like small asian guy and mm-hmm. yellow like mm-hmm. the, just like the whole juxtaposition of it is just like compositionally it's beautiful too right like it, it just further juxtaposition of like kareem kicking him so hard oh that he leaves God. a footprint on his chest and he's just got this basically that, almost the size of his chest is kareem's footprint one of the greatest pictures that's the coolest moment for me that's this was you know what like i think when i was a kid maybe my dad was watching the beginning and he had seen game of death and like uh, eventually like i watched the whole movie like the first introduction one of the first introductions i had to bruce lee was with my dad and he was like yo you gotta come see this part now and just brought me in like at the beginning of the fight scene in the actual movie game of death like there's a kareem fight scene early on where he's just like fighting another asian dude and like in the movie you're like what the fuck like i don't know what this is like this is just like another scene yep and in that one there's a (laughs) there's an amazing thing where like again it's like you know imagine the pagoda where there's like stairs and there's like different levels and this dude is like trying to run away from kareem who again is like a seven three or seven four or whatever he is like a huge dude and he like (laughs) he jumps up 
extends his arm upwards and grabs this dude's head like it's a basketball. Yep. And just yanks him down over the banister. And it's like the coolest thing in the world until you see him kick Bruce Lee in the chest with the footprint. It's yes. like, how is like they're both. So like in Bruce Lee's movie, that's like one of his friends who's trying to fight Kareem and getting his ass absolutely beat. And so you're like, okay, that makes sense here. But like in the movie, just like, this is just like a cool thing, but it's like, what, what is even happening? Yeah. 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 So speaking of that tracks, which you just mentioned so yes. that's obviously everywhere it's a trademark for him and also like we said you can buy it at store or shop.brucelee.com shout out to our sponsor yeah so you would think that like he's again robert klaus makes this movie where like this guy fakes his own death and is trying to lay low and so like why would he wear this like bright neon yellow suit or whatever because like well you know in bruce lee's movie he's wearing it because like it looks badass right but it's like fucking cool yeah but like robert klaus is like okay so yeah we have this footage of him this guy's <laughs> trying need... to fly under the radar so like let's just dress a bunch of other biker dudes in like <laughs> bright different... neon yeah different neon tracksuits that look exactly the same but just different colors like they're the fucking power rangers there's also in the warehouse scenes this is not in bruce lee's version this is something that robert klaus made uh billy low the bruce lee character or the stand-in or whatever wears a pair of yellow adidas shoes with black stripes and white shell toes um and later he wears the yellow moonstar jaguar shoes with black stripes yeah bruce lee wore the latter of those while filming and the double wore the former to resemble the shoes. So there you go. But also of particular note, Uma wears this as the bride in Kill Bill 1. 100%. Yep. It's also seen in Shaolin Soccer, High Risk, The Last Dragon, Revenge of the Nerds, City Hunter, Police Story 4, On the Ropes, and Finishing the Game, which we will cover. Oh. It's also in a lot of uh, manga and anime, including Cowboy Bebop, a lot of cartoons like Turtles, uh, where Splinter's former owner apparently wears the suit, uh, the Boondocks, and more. It's also in games like Grand Theft Auto, Liberty City Stories, The Last of Us, the original. If you beat the game on the hardest difficulty, you unlock that suit, which is awesome. Oh, that's a Animal really Crossing, cool touch. Animal Crossing, New Leaf. Yes. I really like that it's an unlockable suit that if you but if you beat it on the hardest mode that's mm -hmm. very fucking cool okay it's also and i was i was telling you recently that i was watching the show patriot and it's also in that because the main guy's brother is uh he's like he works for a consulate or something or he's like a congressman but he's also like involved in the nsa and he goes by cool rick um because he's like i'm you know i'm, I'm rick but i want to be cool rick like i want to i want to give off you know i want to be cooler than i am so i'm gonna go call me cool rick um which is a joke in the show yeah um and so you would think that a guy uh it, it shouldn't come as a surprise that a guy who goes by cool rick wears this fucking tracksuit <laughs> and wears like the beastie boys tracksuit um like you know from like the license to ill days and stuff it's just like it it's it's everywhere like it's immediately it's like to use brian's word it's iconic iconic instantly recognizable yep 100 percent. even if you didn't know bruce lee like if you didn't watch any bruce lee movies you knew exactly what this was from the jump yep and the only other references that i wrote down because it's a whole long list on wiki but i also wrote down that the gorillas and sugar ray and the clash and buckethead and far east movement and black label society all referenced or alluded to the movie and also of note to us in twofold um, which is also probably the most blasphemous again of all in the song or the video for black widow iggy azalea apparently i don't know if she wears it or references to it or whatever oh but that's an iggy azalea song that features rita ora so two fast connections there <laughs> that reference or allude to this movie and she wears this suit i don't know i i couldn't tell you i i intentionally i didn't take notes there because i'm like i don't want to think about iggy azalea like hey yeah let me look like bruce lee because she's you know tall and white and what you know i don't know what, yeah. whatever so yeah that's a lot of stuff but let's talk about the movie itself because i told you before you watch i was like the backstory is so crazy and you're like this is the one where he died i'm like yeah but it's, it's more than it's that. way like, more than that yeah i didn't i knew some of this didn't know a lot of this so yes thank you for sharing but like with all that in mind or having sort of seen it with fresh eyes and, you know, not just having the nostalgia for it, what did you think of Game of Death? I really like this movie. I like the goofiness of it. The the two Bruce Lee things, like it's just joyous to me. It, I can't remove myself from the nostalgia of it. And obviously, like when I was, okay, I said we were watching Game of Death this week and I told it to Rachel and she's like, God damn, it's another one of these high ya movies. And I was like, yes, that's exactly what it is. It's pretty much like you're just riding, you're on like a long ride at an amusement park just waiting for the end, right? Like you're just <laughs> like, whenever I'm watching, I'm just like, okay, just like, let's get through this fucking hour at the beginning mm -hmm. and like, let's get to the pagoda. And once you do that, it's just fucking awesome. And you're like, this is one of the coolest things I've ever seen in my life. And I instantly forget how 
bad the beginning of the movie is because it's just a vehicle to get me to the end of the movie. That's yep, yep. That's, that's all I feel when I watch it. I'm like, okay, cool. There's like some goofy stuff that happens, but like you're just making a backstory that's just trying to lead you to this ending that you have to see. And once you see it, you're like, yeah, it was kind of worth it. It's it's almost like you have to eat your vegetables to get dessert in a yes. way, but like. In retrospect, it makes me want to watch like Enter the Dragon, The Way of the Dragon, and just like you know yes, the other you like the other four movies on the Blu-ray because it's like this is so it's so cool. Like just seeing dude, Enter the Dragon is so fucking cool, dude. It's so cool. And that's the big Hollywood. That's the one. Like so, the same guy made this and that. It's just I don't know how you do it better. Like I, you know, as much as I want to shit on this movie, like I don't know how you do it better other than I don't. You know, it's it's such a weird predicament to be in. Did you ever take an art class in school? Probably when sure. you were like younger, right? Yeah, Yeah. Did you ever have to do this art project? It's like a very common one that I think a lot of places do where they give you like half of a picture and you have to draw the other half of the mm -hmm. picture. Yep. Yeah, that's what this movie is. And like it looks exactly like your picture did when you were in fourth grade. Like that you're like, oh, yeah, I get that you <laughs> saw. <Shitty. laughs> yeah, yeah, like you saw what would should have been there, but it doesn't look like that. Right. Yeah. Like you're mm -hmm. like this, the side that you have the picture of, like, that's fucking great because that's like a professional picture. But like the other side, you're like, hey, you, you know, it was made by a child. So that's what happens. <sighs> not that he not that the director is a child. Right. No, no, but no, no. You're just you just have so much little like you have so little to work with, like and you have to fill in the gaps and it's not always the best and it looks weird and but there's something kind of but also in the same aspect like you kind of have some kind of joy about that too right because you're like oh well like you did it you did your best it's like it's not it's not awful it could be worse right like at least you tried that's cool <laughs> <laughs> what i thought was weird and i don't know if this is from an earlier you might you might know this is from an earlier movie or if they just shot this with like a double but like it feels weird that like so they know in this world, like the Korean underlords, you know, the, the lords of the underworld or whatever, Timmy, you know, Timmy, the lords of the underworld, shout out yeah. South Park. They know that he is like a martial arts superstar and yet like they still confront him like in a street fight. It's like, why would you like of all the always. ways that you could do this? It's like, why? Why? What, it's it's like, always, it's always, it always happens like this in Bruce Lee movies because like it's, you have to get him to fight more, more than one guy. So like they have to try to fight him, right? Like that's every one of these movies. And like they eventually win. Like, he loses because they, like, sneak up on his girlfriend. They're like, hey, we're going to kill her. And then, like, he gets distracted yeah. and, like, they beat him up or whatever. So, like, I get that, but it's just, like, this feels like not the best plan to be like, hey, well, it's like, okay, okay. So, like, we got to we gotta beat LeBron James. It's like, how can we beat LeBron? Let's challenge him to, like, a two-on-two, -two, like, basketball, like a street basketball. Exactly. Like, <laughs> like, no, literally anything else. Like, you know. <laughs> Like, that's like fight. the one thing like don't do like just i mean like he might be in other things but like don't do the one thing that he's the best in the world at it's like do literally anything else yep yeah yeah <laughs> i agree jesus christ yeah and, like none of them even really have guns all the time you know what i mean it's like it's always like they're like oh yeah we're just gonna get like seven karate dudes and that'll beat them and it's like no it, it'll never work it, it never works like this well that's also what i love about the like the text crawl into the intro of the redux is that, like guns are not allowed in the pagoda it's like okay cool like we got that out of the way it's just like that's we're good like that's just a, a ground rule for this building no yeah guns we're good no guns you're not allowed to have guns in there and then once you get rid of the guns then it's like bruce lee's the best right so yeah it's, but obviously he's not gonna like kick a bullet it's not we're not at the matrix yet so so th there are two things in this movie um that are similar one of which i thought was like the weirdest and dumbest thing and then one of which actually faked me out so there's the Go one ahead. part where like they get wind that billy low that bruce lee might not actually be dead right so they like yes. they excavate his coffin and they open the coffin and like he's just lying in there and like the guy shoves a knife into his face it's just like a porcelain doll so like i don't know <laughs> i don't know why <laughs> I don't know why they made a porcelain doll to like barely just bury an empty coffin. Like I don't, I don't yeah, understand I don't that. Like, go ahead. Oh no, he was shot in the face. It's a closed coffin funeral. We can't, you know, it's a closed casket, whatever. But they have like a life like Bruce Lee that they just crumble. I'm like weird, cool. Don't understand it, but okay. Yeah. But then at the end of the movie, go so ahead. like after he fights Kareem, he then fights like the 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 I guess like the the mob boss's like right hand man or whatever, and that's fine. And <laughs> And then he goes up to, like, the actual mob boss, and the guy's, like, sitting at his desk yep. with both wrists sl slid open. He's, like, bleeding. Dripping out. They show you the wrist. I was like, oh, my God. Like, it looks, you know, because, like, it's actually, like, they shoot it with actually the actor there, and like, he's not moving. And, like, it's, like, weird that he's, like, sitting upright, considering he should be, like, slumped over, but, like, it's weird. <laughs> and then Bruce Lee goes over, and it's just, like, a wax figure. <laughs> it's just like, what? Yeah, he picks up his head and goes, wax, and throws it. <laughs> 
And so then, like, the guy is running away and then just, like, falls to his death. And that's how the movie ends. It's like, what? Yep. Like, what? What? Yep. It's the weirdest thing in the world. It's fucking weird, right? Yeah. But but um, great. That part should have been kept in the movie, right? Like, this is, like, <laughs> somehow we need to reincorporate that part into Bruce Lee's vision. Like, just a wax figurine at the top. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then he just the dude just falls off the pagoda. Like that's it. Being largely unfamiliar with his filmography, I don't know what was like originally in Game of Death, what was in the reshot Game of Death, and what was like pulled from an earlier movie. But like whatever this came from, it's insane. It's it's the weirdest thing in the movie, and that's saying well, they something. Shot, like, there's a cardboard stuff. cutout. Yeah, they they shot new stuff for this, so like he's just yeah. trying to piece together the end of the story. <laughs> But yeah. So there's three different endings to this movie, to this version. So like, not only just like there's the redux and everything, like kind of doesn't really have an ending. It kind of yeah. does, but doesn't really. But there's three different endings. So in the one that we watched, I think like the widely available one, which is the US and international version, as soon as Dr. Land falls to his death, it just goes hard, hard cut into the credits. Just like, yep, end of the movie. In silly credits, yep. In the Cantonese version, the police arrest Billy after Dr. Land dies, which apparently was a requirement in Hong Kong at the time. It's like, I guess if somebody dies, somebody must be arrested. So it's just like, okay, I oh, guess okay. he gets arrested. And then the Mandarin version, Billy escapes on a boat with his girlfriend, and both the Cantonese and the Mandarin versions have completely different end credits and music. It's like, oh, what? Why? What? Yeah, it makes no sense. There's also in the Chinese version, there's an extra fight scene where, where Bruce Lee fights a Korean challenger. I guess they just didn't use that in the American version. They later just stuck that in Game of Death 2. But that's not even Bruce Lee. Like, that's a stand-in. But, like, people say it's the <laughs> best. How do they describe it? It's, like, the best Bruce Lee fight without Bruce Lee or whatever. Just, like, the best stand-in fight. Like, isn't even in this movie. They just, like, they stand it for the sequel, which, again, Bruce Lee's not involved with. And he was, like, dead for, like, nine years. It's just, like, what are you guys doing? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> You're just fumbling the bag so many times here. But let's talk about the Redux. Because the Redux, like, it's it's... Probably. Wait, I wanted to say one thing. Okay. Oh, one thing about the original, like the the full the U.S. version, the full yeah, yeah, yeah. length version. They're going, and um, he he tells his girlfriend to meet him at the ferry, right? Mm -hmm. The Golden Star Ferry, and like he'll be on the passenger thing. And yep. this is really weird connection that we were just rewatching old Amazing Races, and Golden Star Ferry was like one of the things they were looking for. Oh, that's for. so cool. Okay. Yeah, it was so weird that like like when I saw it, I was like, oh, it's green because it's it's Golden Star Ferry, but it's green. They were in Korea. I was like, Rachel, this is the same fucking ferry company, isn't it? And she's like, yep, that's. I wonder if that's a name, like if it's the same company, or if we're just like, uh, hey, let's name our our company after the one in Game of Death. Like it could be either way, right? <sighs> it could, yeah, it definitely could be either way. But they were like in this Asian country. I think it was Korea. The logo, the the where it was, like everything felt very familiar. And when like they said Golden Star, I was like, Rachel, is this the same one? She's like, I, yeah, I think it's the same one. So that was just a weird connection we had to it. That like as I was watching, I was like, whoa, that's something I would have never known before this. But go ahead. We could talk about the Redux. So the, it starts with like a couple different title cards. And I wrote down the first one. And then as soon as the second title card came up, I was just like, I'm not going to write this down. I'm just going to get the gist of it. But uh, he began working on his second directorial project, Game of Death. Uh, he plays the role of Hai Chen, so different name altogether, who is a retired martial arts champion confronted by a Korean crime syndicate that kidnaps his sister and younger brother and forces him to participate in a raid on a five-story pagoda in South Korea. Two of them, two of his friends or whatever, die before the third floor, he his way up, whatever. What I love about this, other than just him, like, you know, the room to groove line, is just, like, him dunking on his opponents mid-battle, just, like, stop with the rehearsed routines. They lack the flexibility to adapt. Just, like, not only am I going to beat your ass like i'm gonna rub yeah. your nose in it yeah that was a very that's like a very bruce lee thing right like that was bruce lee was always like looked down upon by the martial arts masters the actual martial arts masters because he was so flamboyant right like he had this like charisma of like the i am the best type feel like the muhammad ali type you know like you i'm the greatest whatever whatever the the old like chinese masters would be like you you don't have any discipline because that's the side of this that you're seeing that bruce lee's like look i can fight any type of way and like you're doing the old bullshit of these routines i'm beyond that like i've i've ascended this also that reminds me of the young of young rock where his dad does like the muhammad ali like foot shuffle i'm like yeah that's pretty cool like because his dad's like set up as this like uh ultimate showman and he's just yes. you know, using yeah it's all the same thing they were all doing the same thing right like because yeah because like bruce lee muhammad ali the Rock's dad, they're all doing the same type of showboating, yeah. Mm -hmm. What I loved about the most about the Redux, other than just like, it just felt like the movie that we were supposed to be watching, is that when when the second dude, because like, Bruce Lee, like, so there's a guy fighting it, we, we enter mid-battle, right, because I guess they just hadn't shot or whatever, 
footage didn't work, whatever. But it's just like one of his friends fighting the first guy, and like Bruce Lee comes up, and the guy is just like getting his ass kicked, right? Yep. Like he just like let me let me handle this. He's got the bamboo, and he just like beats the guy or whatever. He got the nunchucks and whatever. So they like go up to the next floor, and then like when they go up, his friends are like, "I'm gonna, we're gonna help out. I'm gonna go up to the Kareem thing." He goes up, and then like <laughs> less than ten seconds later, he gets thrown down the stairs. It's, it's great immediately, just like just tossed. Yeah, and I don't remember if it's the same guy or the other guy goes up again, like. Kareem being a seven foot, seven and a half foot tall man is like as tall sitting down as these dudes are standing up. Cause like, you know, they're not the tallest dudes. It's also like, you know, sitting down, he's like probably close to five feet tall. <laughs> yep. So then when he stands up and like takes off his robe to like get into his fighting apparel, the line of sight and like, it's like the camera, like the, I think it's the point of view from like Kareem's perspective and also just like the side by side, like this dude is like looking up at an angle that seems humanly impossible. Like yes. it's just two feet difference. And like his neck is like so far up and it's just, it's like Craned it's inspiring, but it's also just super funny. Yeah. 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 Also as like, he's like stomping around and like, just, you know, all like the dust is falling on Bruce Lee as he's fighting. Cause like the guy's just like rolling out of the way. Like Kareem is just like, is fucking this dude up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and Bruce Lee seeing it from underneath being like, oh, shit, I have to go fight that next. You know, yeah. like, just mm -hmm. knowing what's happening, he's like, oh, there's a big-ass dude up there. But, like, there's also this, like, incredibly weird element to this that is not in the full version at all. Kareem, apparently, like, he's in this dark room, he's got sunglasses on because he's got this, this light sensitivity. And so at one point, Bruce Lee gets, like, kicked or whatever, a hit Does into, he actually, like... What is this light sensitivity thing? What is this? Kareem has, like, red, like, cat or snake eyes. Did you see this? or no no i didn't i didn't catch this go back and watch it's like at the very end he's got these like weird ass eyes like they look like snake eyes they're like white pupils with like red oval slits in the middle okay bruce lee gets hit into the wall and like he knocks out the wall and the sun comes in and like kareem like you know almost like dracula style like recoils in the sunlight okay then like bruce lee like knocks a few more of these out and like he's just like beating them up and then, like he knocks sunglasses off and like they have these like crazy crazy eyes it's the mm. weirdest thing it's like the supernatural thing like i guess they're almost like how do we explain the presence of a man who's this tall and this limber like it, he's got to be like an alien or something okay okay it's the it's the weirdest inclusion like it's cool but it's also like what what is happening yeah yeah, that's very weird. I have a couple more trivia things, but anything other, any other thoughts about either the movie or the Redux? Anything of note that you wanted to say? Any fast connections? I don't know that there are any, but any other cool moments? Anything you are, is there a cool moment? Do you have a do you have a cool moment? Ryan, don't lose that cool of yours. That's your meal ticket. I for me, it's it's the it's the footprint on the chest. That's that's okay. it. It's so iconic, and like that's the coolest moment of the movie for me. And that's in both versions, which is cool. Which yes, which is very very cool. Um, and when they change Bruce Lee's and have the other actor come in and is wearing the suit with the footprint and it's clearly not Bruce Lee and mm -hmm. you just watch Bruce Lee fight this guy, it's yeah. really awesome. It just like cracks me up every time. He's like, he like, it's like Bruce Lee like starts running up the steps. The guy turns around. It's not Bruce Lee anymore. <laughs> You're like, Whoa. like I, I really wonder if they thought this was going to work or not. Like I want to get in their head and be like, this is, it's either like, we're proud of this or this is the best we can do. And I, I think I, it's the best we could do. It has a lot of that vibe. I, I, I guess you don't put a cardboard cut out in a thing and like be like yep this we nailed it right? nailed it <laughs> fucking killed this but some fast connections we mentioned it before but there's two fake deaths in this movie sure yep i'm surprised we've never seen anybody but i thought about it and then i was like okay maybe we get like jail time but like somebody in a mental hospital considering like we watched shutter island too shutter Ugh. island as well Ugh. But no, 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 like, how do we never get, like, how is Cypher not wind up in a mental hospital, right? Like, I feel like that's something that we haven't tapped yet. Like, we've seen, like, Jason Statham and The Rock in jail, and then, like, kind of fight out of that, but, like, we've never seen anybody on, like, you know, the crazy island. I'm assuming maybe one day we'll get a boss that goes to the crazy island. I feel like it's probably because, like, the people we're seeing are all, like, multi-millionaires. It's, like, how they don't really go to real prison. They only go to, like, country club prison. Like, they probably just go to, like, private mental health care facilities as opposed to, like, yeah. you know what I mean? So. <laughs> yeah. Very nice ones. Not it's these. It's good like, to be rich, right? So it's very good to be rich. And the last fast action that I had when I was watching this is um, that at the end of the movie we get that rooftop parkour, which is really cool. Oh yeah, for sure. And I was like, oh, this is very Brian O'Connor chasing him down. 
because he like hangs over the thing. So those are my those are my all my fast connections all together all at once. Also, speaking of uh, parkour and Paul Walker, the uh, the movie Brick Mansions where he's with Rizzo. Yeah. There's a lot of parkour in that too. We covered that on the the Brian O'Connor Paul Walker lap. The only other trivia that I wanted to have was you mentioned before about calling this like a video game movie. So there's these uh, two Italian film scholars, Simone Bedetti and Lorenzo De Luca, identified this as an early example of what they call the quote arcade movie genre of action films. Interesting. They have three characteristic elements. The achievement of a goal, passing okay. a series of levels, and ascending through a path, whether physical or symbolic. Other examples of this include Enter the Dragon, but also Die Hard, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, Mortal oh. Kombat, and Sudden Death, which is all just like, you know, Mortal Kombat makes Dude. sense because it's whatever, but yeah. And Sudden Death, one of my greatest favorite action movies of all time. Yeah, I don't know if I've seen Sudden Death. Sudden Death takes place during a Penguins game. Oh, Wow. It's okay. Jean-Claude Van Damme fighting during, literally during a Penguins game. When a man's daughter is suddenly taken during a championship hockey game with the captors demanding a billion dollars by game's yep. end, he frantically sets a plan in motion You've to rescue her. You've never seen this movie? No, this was one of the ones that oh was on God. our uh, best action yes. movies of the 90s. And I voted I... for it every time. Because <laughs> it's like my favorite. Like, I mean, a any chance that I could, I think it was only lasted one round or maybe two. I was like, sudden death is fucking it, dude. Yeah, um, the Penguins mascot's in it. The guy who sings the national anthem still at games sings the national anthem in the movie that's so weird that's so cool okay i'll, I'll watch that soon it's 90s action jean claude van damme like it's, it's also just like a fun it's very much in the same vein as die hard you know what i mean like it's not yeah. as classic as that but it's very underrated and it takes like there's hockey in the game like in the movie so and it was shot in it was shot at the arena in pittsburgh like at the igloo at the igloo yeah the old civic arena yep where Very I had my cool. seats for years, so personal to me. But it's also a good movie. I'm not overhyping it. <laughs> Go watch it. Like, it really is fucking fun and good, so. And then the other, I don't know if these are the same uh, film scholars or something different, but they all, people also consider this one of the foundations of the beat-em-up genre of video games, or I guess like the Streets of Rage kind of thing, where it's just like a bunch of dudes like getting to a boss, you have to beat them up. Uh, but they said that Enter the Dragon was also the foundation for fighting games, uh, where yeah. like there's a series of tough martial arts opponents that have a weakness that must be discovered and exploited. So I'm thinking like Punch-Out, thinking like, you know, anything, which is like Mortal Kombat even, right? Which is like, you yeah. have to just one-on-one, -on -one, you just have to figure out how to beat them and beat them, right? So. Dude, Enter the Dragon's so fucking good. I really want to, to make you watch Enter the Dragon. I will. Well, I'm going to. That's like this. This inspired me. Whenever you watch Enter the Dragon, let me know. I'm going to rewatch it with you. Maybe we'll do this a Patreon. Like we have a bunch of Patreon bonus episodes, but maybe we'll just do another one because I'm going to watch it soon. I think. If you want to do, if you want to do that for sure, I'm in. I think it's funny that like we're like we're back to once a week, and then there's all these movies like I want to talk about anyway. It's like well, you know, we'll just yeah, and do I want to talk we'll... about it with you. If you're going to watch like yeah. more Bruce Lee ones, fuck it, yeah, for sure. Because like so the 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 Criterion Blu-ray. I don't know if I want to bring this up. Hold on, Criterion. So it's 125 dollars, but like uh, four or five times a year, Criterion or Barnes and Noble puts it half off. So like it's like 60 bucks. Which again, I know it's not cheap, but there's five movies plus like two other things. So there's The Big Boss, Fist of Fury, Way of the Dragon, End of the Dragon, and Game of Death. Plus Game of Death Redux is on there, and also the 2K restoration of the theatrical version of Enter the Dragon, which is apparently rarely seen. There's also the special edition version of Enter the Dragon. So like, oh. there's two different versions of that too. Oh. So like, it's like this beautiful box set. Cover is yellow. It's just, it's, it's gorgeous. So I'm, I'm super jealous that you have that. The Way of the Dragon, Return of the Dragon, and Enter the Dragon are three really great. The one where he fights Chuck Norris, which I thought that it was Return of the Dragon, but I think it's I think starts... that's Way of the Dragon, I think. Yeah, an epic gladiatorial death match with Chuck Norris in the Coliseum. Is in yeah, the that Dragon. one is yeah. so fucking awesome, dude. It's so cool. Like, the, the the clip that you get at the beginning of this one, I was like, oh shit, I forgot that they start with this. Like, that's so cool. That's like one of the... Yeah, it's awesome. It's so awesome. They fight in the Coliseum, dude. It's Chuck Norris and Bruce Lee <laughs> fighting in the... Like, how you can't get much cooler than that. Like, ugh. And, like, then there was, like, the whole Chuck Norris wave of, like, Chuck Norris was the coolest guy ever and he gets his ass beat by bruce lee right so like waters and wet chuck norris doesn't get wet water gets chuck norris type thing oh yeah 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 because if you look on letterboxd and you sort by average rating highest first like the highest rated average thing is game of death redux which is how i like oh i, I, had, that's fair. I had read about it but i didn't know that like it was included in the criterion thing then i saw the cover and i was like oh cool i have that and i was like i'm glad that i watched it because it was awesome yep. but then it's enter the dragon and then fist of fury but Enter the Dragon is like uh, three eight, which is you know for Letterbox really really high. So. Enter the Dragon is so cool. It is so cool. It's it's my favorite one for sure. And Game of Death is like fourth from the bottom. 
Like it's one of the worst rated ones because I mean, it's not it's not a terrible rating. Like we're gonna play the game soon. It's got like a two eight, which is not terrible. Like it's just kind of run down the middle. But like it's one of his lowest ones. But like worse than that is Game of Death two, which has a two six. <laughs> So let us play the... Actually, let's watch the trailer first. got to watch the trailer first. got to find this. From five years ago, from Two Wen. So it's two minutes and 17 seconds long. It's by this guy, Two Wen. Put it up. Game of Death, Columbia Pictures, trailer, HD, 1979. Ready whenever you are, bud. All right. Three, two, one, play. Ooh, a blue MPAA. Look at that. I don't know if yeah, I've seen too many old, blue ones. Man. Old. His last and greatest motion picture adventure. Well, one of those is true. <laughs> it's his last, yeah. It's his last. I love the sound effects, too. International superstar. So that's not, that's just straight up not from this movie. <laughs> not from this movie. The woman yeah. he loves belongs to the mob. And now oh my god. They're out to Did you see that CGI of like the face not moving, just like photoshopped on there? <laughs> if they can't oh my him, god. They'll have to kill him. Billy! Billy! You don't have too many choices. <laughs> A final There's warning. Mr. Land. Yeah. And so begins the, the game, game of death. death. Oh, boy. <laughs> what is that? Oh my god, what is Columbia that? Pictures it's just six of his heads shouting and like hovering around screen. His motion That's not from this game movie. Of no. Death. Starring Gig Young. Dean <laughs> Colleen Camp. Colleen? Okay. I guess. And Kareem Abdul Jabbar as Hakim. I love that they named him Hakim too. <laughs> That's so good. It becomes a matter of survival. Before and after. <laughs> <laughs> the undisputed master of the martial arts becomes a master of disguise and the champion. A master of, of the disguise. Of death. This, this felt very um. Film of Bruce Lee. La to me too, by the way. I can see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. That fight scene was pretty cool too. Was that him? Was that from a different movie or was that not him? I couldn't tell. That was not him. When he's yeah, fighting. that's what I thought. It's just like the from faces the movie, cut right? to him. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. there's so many times in this movie where it's just like from behind his head or whatever. It's like, this isn't... This isn't how we should be watching this movie. I was laughing so hard when they went to like the, the karate tournament and every Asian guy from behind looked exactly the same, right? Like she like turned, yeah. she's like, was that Billy? And it was like, oh no, they just all had this exact same haircut. Boy, like, I think I would love this movie, like in the so bad it's good way, if like it didn't end with like 20 minutes of genuinely great footage. Like I don't like, yeah. you don't make a Bruce Lee footage, you don't make a Bruce Lee movie without Bruce Lee, but like, it's like, it's this weird thing. And then you get to the end, you're like, oh no, this is what it's supposed to be. Like it, it almost, yes. it's so weird. It's so weird. It's so weird. I'm glad that, okay. I'm glad that you came around on like the. But yeah, it's just fucking weird, like, man. I don't think I'm ever going to watch this movie again. Like, I'm going to watch the Redux again, but I don't think I'm yes! ever going to watch this, like, the Game of Death, just, like, the reg the full 101-minute thing or whatever. The but, thing like, is, if it's if it's on a playlist, if you put, like, Bruce Lee movies on a playlist, and this was on it, you'd be like, oh, yeah, whatever. Like, yeah. this, again, at my fucking dive bar, I'd have a Bruce Lee night, I would play the full Game of Death, and everybody would be like, what the fuck is it? And you're like, yeah. Well, I mean, people would know. But yeah, you're like, you just have to get to the end. We're just keep drinking until we get to the good part and then we'll do that <laughs> yeah so the final thing to do the letterbox game and this is it might be tricky actually i don't i don't look at the numbers so i don't know i know the number of people who have the top Ooh. four but i don't know the other number but for reference sake mad max fury road one of the most popular films on letterbox has been seen by seven hundred and forty-eight thousand people seven four eight Damn. almost three quarters of a million game of death from 1978 directed by robert klaus starring bruce lee gig young dean jagger and hugh o'brien has been seen by how many people? Again, average rating of 2.8, most common a 3. <sighs> this is tough for me. I'm going to say because it's so cult classic, but also it's so old, I'm going to go, I'm going to start with 35,000. You're too high. Hmm. How about 22,000? Still too high. One more guess. Oh, 17, 5. 13-3-9-7. 1-3-3-9-7. Not a lot. Not a lot. No, I was expecting a lot more, like, at least just because it's, like, Bruce Lee's last movie, and, and it's weird, right? Like, this is, like, a very letterbox thing to, like, study, because you're like, oh, what the fuck did they do to this movie? Yeah. Game of Death Redux has only been seen by 243 people, so, like, it's, like nobody's seen that. Yeah, and nobody. 
2,700 people saw the Be Water doc that came out last year, the 30 for 30. Oh, by the way, Kareem, so remember Bruce Lee is in uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood in that fight scene, like he gets his ass kicked. Yes, by Brad Pitt. I was just saying this. Yes, I'm glad you brought that up. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar came out and like railed against Quentin Tarantino in an op-ed where he's just like, you got his, you, like, not only did you get him wrong as like a, as a martial artist, but you got him wrong as a man. Like he was like very adamant, like that his friend was disrespected on screen. So I can believe that if you were friends yeah. with Bruce Lee, I mean, like, he makes him look like a shithead, but at the same time, like yeah. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood wasn't supposed to be historically accurate, right? Like it's, it's meant right, no, to yeah, be no. like a fantasy of yeah. it's a it's a you know fever dream of Tarantino's of the time. So yes. I, I don't take too much offense to that, right? It is weird to use him like use him by name though. Like it just like have like loose B or whatever. Like you could like, you know, reference it. I don't know. It's just <laughs> yeah. like a oh, it's Bruce Lee on the set of the Green Hornet, like being an asshole. It's like that's okay. Yeah, yeah, I feel you. Yep. And I think I think Tarantino like, came out and defended it, like, oh no, I'm like I'm paying homage to him or whatever. Like we're having a fight scene. Like I want to direct a Bruce Lee fight scene, but she's still just like like you love the guy. Like you dressed Uma Thurman as him in this movie. Like you clearly have doing, respect right? for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is not very respectable. So out of those thirteen thousand people, how many have in their top four? <sighs> Fifteen. Too high. Way too high. Uh, six. Still too high. One more guess. Four. Four. Okay. I was hoping for, like, somebody to be like, I fucking love how goofy this is and the fight scene at the end is great, but okay, go ahead. So there, of the four people I looked at all four, only one reviewed it. Uh, one other person has, like, four Bruce Lee movies in their top four, which is not fun. Uh, we're gonna, so we're gonna read the review by Sammy Chang, but we're gonna do somebody else's top four, because Sammy Chang just says, five stars. The legend Bruce Lee would have been extremely proud. I cried uncontrollably at several points of this majestic masterpiece. That's, that's an interesting take. It's a very okay. <laughs> I would say wrong, but you know, <laughs> it's opinion. You can't be wrong on your opinion. Sure, majestic masterpiece. Very flowery language, but okay. Okay. So we're gonna do Kyber Zoo at Kyber Zoo on both Letterboxd and Twitter. Game of Death is Kyber Zoo's fourth favorite movie of all time. Okay. Top three are all pretty big movies. Uh, one of which I'm, I'm. I think we've only had one of these before. It is probably the most iconic movie that stars an actor we talked about earlier this episode. And it's also one of my favorite movies of all time. Stars an actor we talked about earlier in this episode. Mm -hmm. Is it a Chuck Norris movie? Nope. I don't think any movie Chuck Norris has ever been in is one of my favorite movies of all time. That's what I was wondering. Iconic movie of an actor we talked about. Mm -hmm. Who did we talk about? Bruce it's, a, it's a movie. Jackie Chan? Like Rush nope. Hour? No. Nope. Okay. I do like Rush Hour. Uh, this movie, or this actor was in a movie that referenced or alluded to Game of Death. Is it Uma Thurman? Is it Kill Bill? Nope, but that would fit the criteria. Yeah. Um, From 1999. Raid? Nope, earlier. 1999. It's the first of a trilogy. Is it The Matrix, Keanu Reeves? It is The Matrix. Okay, Because cool. we talked about John okay. McThree. Okay. Yep. And I even said The Matrix earlier, so. Yes. Number one is a classic college guy dorm room movie poster where it's like yeah it's a good movie but like college dudes <laughs> think it's way better than it actually is because they're like this fight is club. the greatest no but it, in that in that vein uh older than fight club though but it's like bro this is scarface the fucking... there you go scarface. <laughs> Thank you. it's like scarface or boondock saints it's like those two like yeah <laughs> scarface is a good movie but like you're fucking obnoxious stop it. if it wasn't if it wasn't animal house you were like yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. animal house scarface boondock saints fight club there you go I put off watching Scarface for like five years longer than I wanted to because I'm like, there's no way it's actually good. It is. At least on the people who like them. Yeah, it is good. But it's just like, <laughs> fuck, like the people who love this movie all suck. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And you love it for the wrong, it's another one of these movies. Like you love it for the wrong reasons. Like this yep. is not, yeah. Yeah. Okay. He dies. He fucking dies at the end. He's not a hero. Spoilers. <laughs> yeah, spoilers. By the way, they sold for a while a special edition of Scarface with a humidor and a cigar that was like $1,000. And it was like one of my favorite things to track the price of like on Amazon, like through Blu-ray.com. Because like they would just like drop it by $300. Like nobody's buying it for $1,000. Like let's sell it for $700. It's like who wants to spend $700 on Scarface? Like what are you know. doing? They should have made six of them and just given them to like rappers that's yeah it. the wu-tang martin shkreli thing right just like exactly yes exactly kyber zoo's third favorite movie is the first movie in a franchise so this is going to be a very specific but not very helpful clue it's the first movie in a franchise that has probably led to like 10 or 12 or 15 movies but it's it's a the it's land a before time nope 
Damn. It is a franchise that we have never talked about, I don't think, in any of these Letterboxd games, but it also fits in with the Letterboxd games. Also, here is a hint that is not going to be helpful for you at all, but I just remember this fact this week. Justin Lin directed the third movie in the rebooted version of this franchise. Oh, God. What the fuck does that mean? But this movie is from 1979. Is it, is it Star Trek? There you go. Star Trek The Motion Picture. Nice. I don't think we've ever had a Star Trek movie in here. And then Justin Lin, I remembered. So Justin Lin's a very weird director in that, like, he started, like, a handful of movies that, like, most people haven't seen when all of a sudden done he will have directed like seven fast and furious movies and then the only other like big movie he's done is star trek beyond it's like a yeah. very weird resume yeah very very strange resume because we go from fucking the han origin story mm -hmm. to to star trek to fast and furious so yeah well speaking of the han origin story i believe a couple characters i don't remember who exactly i think Maybe Roger Fan, the act? I don't remember. But I think a couple people from Better Luck Tomorrow are in finishing the game. So you and I oh, will cool. record that on Friday and we'll come out over the weekend or on Monday for patrons. So if you want to hear even more, it's a comedy. I don't know anything about it other than it's a comedy. I'm, so I'm assuming it's going to be a lot like um, Disaster Artist. Maybe. That, I'm that might feeling be that kind guess. of vibe, yeah. right? If you want to watch along with us, it is available for rent and purchase on iTunes. It's not streaming anywhere for free, but if you want to join us, it's on iTunes. Yeah. That's next, patrons. And then next week, full episode for everyone, for free, in the feed, Fast and Furious 6 with Heather Antos. But before then, says about it. between now and then, finishing the game, what's the full title? Hold on. Finishing the game, The Search for a New Bruce Lee. Which I guess, it, it, I would imagine, yeah, the disaster artist might be good. It's just like somebody plays Roger Robert Klaus and it's just like, I got to figure out a guy. Like, how do we make a movie out of this, right? So Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. It's going to it's gonna be like, oh, like, oh, uh, yeah, use the cardboard cutout. And you're like, mm -hmm. okay. That's, that's why I was guessing disaster artist vibes. Uh, any other thoughts about Game of Death or the Redux or anything else you want to mention in this episode? I hope that everyone's seen it. And if you haven't, go watch at least the final fight scene or the Redux. Yeah. And I can't wait for you personally to watch more Bruce Lee movies because they're a lot of fun. And uh, I would like to talk about them with you just in general. So Very, very cool. Yeah, they're all on, I think there's like a, multiple ones on Pluto TV. So if you have access to, I mean, it's Pluto's for free. Yeah, so. There's like a whole Pluto channel that I put it on at night and Rachel gets upset about it. But it's like Shaw Brothers and Bruce Lee movies. And there's yeah, like, it's cool. Yeah, it's really cool. <laughs> it's really cool. Yeah. I will say without spoiling anything else, where there's like a... Like, I think three other kind of huge hallmarks of Asian cinema, maybe huge might be overstepping for at least one, if not two, but there's like, we're like dipping our toe in the water here a little bit with the Bruce Lee stuff, but there's like, we're not going back to Bruce Lee as far as I know for the rest of the lap, but there's other stuff that we are covering that is as I think long-term influential or important, especially, you know, to us and to what we like uh, as Bruce Lee stuff and like Game of Death and stuff like that. So there's a lot of cool stuff. I'm still very excited about the slap. Same. Only like a third of the way through, right? Because we got a lot more to go with Heather. We got all the spy racers, God help us, again. And yeah, the video yeah. game again. Yeah, but lots of good stuff coming up. But uh, for all things Too Fast, Too Forever, you go to cageclub.me, facebook.com slash Too Fast, Too Forever, or at Too Fast, Too Forever on Twitter and Instagram. Email us, family at cageclub.me. Check out our Patreon page at Too Fast, Too Forever.com if you want the bonus episode. If you like the show and you want to support us, Too Fast, Too Forever.com. Get fun. finishing the game. Too Fast, Too Forever.shop. As of right now, everything's on sale, but I think by the time this comes out to anybody, it won't be on sale anymore. Do that or just buy my Teso Dos Picho shirt. Give me money. Buy cool things. And then come back next week for Fast and Furious 6 with Heather Antos. I'm Joey Lewandowski. I'm Joe too. And we'll tell you all about it. <laughs>